Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Two Phones. Doing the pre-show, Google Idol live stream. Um, let's see. I'll turn that down. That thing will be going off anyway. It ain't started yet, y'all. It ain't started yet. Let's see. Okay, I'm on 9 to 5 Google. Nothing's going on right now. So, uh, I got time. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm finna go ahead and pop, fix me some more coffee. <laughs> As usual. Yo, what's up? Got the, um... So I got 9 to 5 in the chat room and everything like that. Y'all can see a little bit of chat. Oh, it's just coffee and stuff. You know, I can, I can do that. Let me play some little music in the background real quick. We can go ahead and do that. What's up, what's up? It's your boy Two Phones. You know what I mean? You know, I got that Super Mario Retro. All day, baby. Kinda got the Google colors on. I ain't got nothing Google, so it sort of got the Google colors. No. About to get it popping in a minute. Now you know they had some flops uh, back in 2000 from 2009. I think even um, 2014 they had flops. Nobody, I probably nobody probably even remember the Nexus Q. Um, they had that um, that prototype of the mods what Motorola did, but Motorola they accomplished it better because of Lenovo, I guess. Uh, Project Aura. Um, 
Let's see what else they had. It's a flock ways. Uh, I mean, not ways, but wave. It was like a interaction, interchangeable uh, email uh, client and things like that. You can mix the photos, email, and it was. I don't know, it was a mixed bag, man. It was a mixed bag. Yeah, they, 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 you know, they had a few things going on, going wrong with them. So, you know. Okay, while we waiting on them, let me see. Let's see if CNET got that. CNET, they usually be live streaming on. Let's see what they're talking about real quick. Yeah, I think they're talking about this. It's going to give us a look at. Okay. Let's see what Android is. See what, uh, yo, what's up, everybody? They're not even give, okay. They're not even giving us a live stream yet. <laughs> so, um, I don't know why I stopped, but yeah, nobody, nobody's live yet. Um, everybody's, I guess, everybody's getting their uh, self situated at the um, conference. But uh, let's see. Uh, of course, they're gonna be talking about Google Home. They're gonna be talking about Google Assistant. They might, they might talk about more interactions on uh, things with. The apps, Google Duo, Allo, and uh, let me see. I can show you those apps real quick. All right, so Allo, it's this little messaging app from Google. It's supposed to, I don't know, man. I, I'm a mixed bag with the, the messaging app. That's that's why they're not in the top on the oh, Google Play Store. That's why they're not in the top. Then you got Android messages. Most people got that pre installed on the Android app. And then also you got... Uh, Dual is supposed to uh, compete with FaceTime, and I don't know, man. Everybody, everybody got their favorite apps. So I mean, it, Google got to do something with the messaging apps, man. That's one thing Google has to do. What's up, Ryan? Was good, man. Okay, cool. All right. Um, shoot, I could probably go through that real quick. I might have to turn it down though. I'll go in with. Hold on. I had to turn the volume down though. Yeah, I could probably I could probably watch myself. I don't know. Alright, cool. I'm watching myself on YouTube. <laughs> it's funny the video look off too. I don't think I can do that though, I don't know. I don't see I don't see my chat though. I don't know why my chat not showing it. I don't see my chat over here. It's a high chat, but I don't see it. But yeah, so if you if you if you new to the channel, um it's your boy I take you all got aka two phones. I don't know, I'm thinking about just going to um uh, change my channel name all the way to two phones. Two phones, tube or something, two phones TV, something like that. I'm thinking about doing that officially, making go all the way, cause it's almost been two years since I've been since I've been doing two phones, you know, two phones. And um Okay, so I got a Nexus. So I got one of Google's uh phones and it has the latest, alright? So it has the latest and greatest operating system, Android 7.1, uh point two. Um it has the main security patch. If for all you that don't know about security patches, it's supposed to give you the um. It's a, it's supposed to help improve your phone from flaws and bugs and all that type in, infection and viruses and all that type of stuff. But for the simple fact that uh, the Nexus line, okay, so maybe you all just know about the Pixel, but the Nexus line. It's it's the backgrounds the it's 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 the back back end of Android, all right? Everything Android 
that you see about Android, it, it comes from the Nexus line. But, but see, okay, Ryan, the thing is, man, everybody, like I said, everybody got their favorite messaging app. And that's true. I wish they would have did that. They tried, but a lot of people didn't catch on. Right, right, right. Next, basically, the pixel took took up after what the Nexus did. And um, I don't know. I still like the 6P. I still like the 5X. And they're still going to get updated till 2018, 2019, whatever. So, um, no, so I'm still getting Android O on, on this phone. I'm cool because everybody else. It's not gonna get Android O unless they got a Google Pixel or a Nexus. Point blank. I mean, if you if you got a Samsung, good luck. If you got an LG, good luck. Even if you got Motorola, this is a Motorola, and this is my second favorite, um, second favorite device, and one of my second favorite OEMs. Um, but uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think Google should have kept Motorola, but it is what it is. I, uh, fortunately, people are like where well, they're losing, they're losing money. They're losing. They're not marketing right. And Google never markets. They don't care about marketing. Google is. They're not. They got a search engine. As long as you search it from Google, you, they making money. <laughs> they making money. They don't. They don't care about selling phones and no. Nah. <clears throat> but they they do want to compete. I give them that. They want to compete. But in order for Google to compete, they need to sell their phones everywhere. Instead of just from the Google Store, Best Buy. They need cell phones at Walmart, Target, <laughs> um, Sears, maybe, uh, Big Kmart, I don't know. Places where everybody will see their phone everywhere. And then they need a low budget phone like like the like Motorola. They got like seven different new eight different new phones. So if Google wants to really compete in the phone market, they need to come out with more than just two. Cause Apple even at least Apple got three now. They got the iPhone SE, iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Plus. So I mean they got three. They got one more than Google. So that they can if if Google could come out with two low budget plus the two high end, they'll be alright. Google be alright as a phone manufacturer. They'll be alright. They'll, they'll they'll be in the in, in the ranks with um Hey, what's up? <laughs> Street shops the vending machines. Project Five, man. <laughs> Google Project Five, but uh, and we gonna talk about that too. Um, so my thing is, <clears throat> if Google really wants to compete, they gotta like, they gotta make more than two phones, man. Now I, I've heard rumors about them having three Pixel prototypes, but who knows what that third phone is? I mean, that third device is. It could be a tablet. We haven't heard anything from a seven inch tablet in Google since like 2013, 2014. So it's been a while. Um, the last like real tablet they dropped was what? The Nexus 9 and Pixel C. So they need to bring out another tablet, maybe two, to, you know, to, to go hand in hand with the Pixel line because they didn't do that last year. And of course you can still use the Pixel C and Nexus 9. But I think the Nexus 9 is on its last leg anyway, man. I won't recommend I won't recommend nobody get no Nexus 9. <clears throat> but 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 that's how that is though. So um Yeah, we we are still here sitting waiting on uh the Google IO story still offline off on uh, um 9 to 5 Google. I don't know what's going on. Um they're even beginning. I don't know who's beginning. <laughs> okay, that's where you was from. All right, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I'm on nine to five right now, and, and everybody's just in the chat. So I'm just chatting away with everybody else. So, uh, yeah, what are your predictions um, with Google? What are you guys expecting, man? And leave your comments in the comment section. Um, just let me know your thoughts, man. Um, I really hope they 
figure out how to get everybody the latest operating system. Like they do have a little project they they, they got they want to push out called Trouble Trouble, but unfortunately, it's still going to be up to the manufacturers. It's still going to be up to the carriers. I mean, Google they want to like somehow for force the update regardless of the carrier and the manufacturer and. and this is another thing I tell people in all my videos, no matter what I'm talking about, whether it's talking about low budget, high end phones. Look, you if if you're an Android user, y'all gotta hear me out, man, because I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. <laughs> it, 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 it took me a long time to you know get away from the carrier bull crap or whatever. But if you're an Android user and you want to be on Android seven or Android eight in a while, you gotta get you a Motorola phone or next is a Pixel. For the simple fact, these the phones is gonna get updated first. Unfortunately, I mean, yeah, um, Motorola and Lenovo they haven't come out and said anything about 7.1.1 on the Moto G5 Plus. To be honest, it's more than it's more than powerful enough to get it because it got four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of byte internal memory. Like it's it's more than enough. What's up? Are you from Russia? All right, what's up? What's up? Well, hey, welcome, uh. Welcome, as is from Russia, man. He's from Russia. Shout out to Russia, man. Real talk. See, see, I'm I'm a global, I'm a global type person. And ain't nobody know that. I, I got I got fans from India. I got fans from China. Up in this man, I got fans from all over the world. So it is what it is. Boss forty five was good, man. We just waiting on this show to start. I'm just talking, um, to y'all about Google Owl. What do what do I expect? I mean, I expect them to Google. You gotta come hard, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Google, you gotta come hard. I mean, Microsoft falling off. I don't know what Apple gonna do. Yes, next month, so we gotta wait to see what Apple do. And to be honest, I think Google should have waited to after Apple. The other way they can see what Apple got going on. Pixel 2, man, like, I don't know. I still, once again, man, it's it's gotta have, I don't know, it's gotta have great battery life, like the Moto G5 Plus. It's gotta have Front facing speakers like the 6P. I'm just saying, man. You got front facing speakers. I, I'm still I'm satisfied with four gigs around. I don't know why people are so ooh, you ain't got the you ain't got the best, you ain't got six gigs or eight gigs around. Man, come on, man. Like Android, oh look, Android, oh, I don't think it's gonna be the one where we have to worry about RAM management, okay? It was Android 7 that we had to worry about RAM, RAM management because as we know. With the Nexus 5X, that is fail in RAM management. It did everything right, except for RAM management. I mean, battery life was, meh, okay, it's like 2,700 milliamp battery. All right, 2,700 milliamp battery. All right, I have to, I have to do that, man. I have to do that. You with? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, man, I don't want to get into the, uh, the carrier wars today, man. I don't know. But okay, we could talk about carry rewards for a simple fact. Look, Google has not said anything about Project Five. I don't think for the past, I don't think for the past two hours. So it's like, hmm, are they are, are they just saying uh, we gonna scoot it under the rug? We not focus on Project Five because like if you guys that watch me uh, on Google Plus. I don't even know, Ryan, but if you guys see my Google Plus rant, my Twitter rant, my Facebook rant, I'm like, man, I mean, I was a cool fanboy Project 5. I enjoyed the concept of having T-Mobile, uh, Sprint, US Cellular, uh, 3, Open Wi-Fi, all, all that's, all that's a, a connection, an open connection, and, you know, like, one signal guy weak. It's switch automatically switch boom boom pow. Sprint got with switch T Mobile. T Mobile got with switch Sprint or USL whichever whichever one they switch to. But I also found out I discovered that sometimes I was underneath um, Boost. Sometimes they run on Boost, but Boost is a uh, third party on Sprint. So I'm like, why is it showing Boost? Anyways, but uh, it was a good run. But if they don't mention anything about Project Five today or tomorrow. I'm throwing in the towel, man. Like, I, I got my high hopes some text now. And to be truthfully honest, I can I can use text now without doubt. 
Like when I mean without data, without LTE connection, I can still call out and I can still receive calls. And it uses the stock dollar. So a lot of you all thinking text now wireless don't use the stock dollar. It does. It just depends on the number. It just depends on, I guess, the number and carriers from. And you know, Freedom Pop does too. They can use the stock dollar. But the thing is, you got to buy that premium stuff. So if you ain't on a premium package, you're not going to get it. Yeah, you're going to have to use the application and use Google Voice or Google Hangouts to get you a good, decent call quality. And then that's cool. Uh, Text Now does have VOLTE. I did do a video yesterday. Check it out. While you waiting on Google I.O. to start, check out um, some of my old videos. Um, I, I mentioned it. Um, I showed people how to... Um, set up their their manage manage their plans. Uh, Show y'all to get free credits um, to pay for your phone bill. So you can do everything right from the Text Now app. And this is like why I don't get people like why they hate on Text Now. But you can use their app to get you free service. And you, I mean, if you can't recruit people, if you can't recruit people to sign up and just tell them like, yo, man, I've been using this for a lot, a lot. It's a great service. Now I'm getting my phone service for free. You can get your phone service for free for a month or two months or whatever. How long you want it free for? And then um, unless you want to switch, yeah, it don't necessarily have to be a main carrier, but you know it could be a backup carrier. I give them that. Freedom Pop could be your backup carrier because the service is automatically free once you downgrade. Once you downgrade from all that that premium trial stuff. It's free for life. Like even if you didn't use it for a month or two months, you'll still get your minutes and your data and all that. So, I mean, those are good alternatives. Let's say if T-Mobile, okay, let's say you got T-Mobile and T-Mobile's horrible wherever you ended up going. At least you have Sprint or AT&T as a backup. I got Sprint on here. It's working great in my area. AT&T, I got on Freedom Pop. <laughs> I got free gig of data. In minutes and stuff like that, I can use my um AT and T with Friend on Pop. I can just change that. All my phones are unlocked, so I can put AT and T in my Moto G, my Nexus, whatever. But to be honest, I'm I'm gonna be real with y'all. If y'all want the AT and T SIM card from Friend on Pop, the best experience you're going to have personally is with an AT and T phone with the um Friend Pop AT and T SIM card. The reason why I say that is because AT and T got all their there are tech, technical apps like the smart Wi-Fi. That thing actually works. It will automatically connect you to a Wi-Fi open spot. So if you do get the Freedom Pop sound card and you got free service, and let's say you don't get signal somewhere with AT&T, all you got to do is look up AT&T Wi-Fi partners, and they'll automatically open you up to Wi-Fi. And that's that. And then, you know, like I said, we can go back to Project 5 with that. That's one thing I liked about Google's Project 5. If I didn't have T-Mobile or Sprint in the area, Google will find me open Wi-Fi hotspots and it'll automatically connect me to a Wi-Fi hotspot. Okay, so CNET said they're going live. Let me check CNET real quick. But, um, yeah, man, everybody talking about unlimited data, man. I guess y'all don't believe in Wi-Fi, man. I'm sorry. I guess y'all don't believe in Wi-Fi. But like I said, if I had to do a... Um, if I had to do a, a phone, man, I don't know. I would pick this as my daily driver still. I still use it sort of like my daily driver. But um, I don't know, y'all. It, it, it's crazy. It's real crazy. I would pick the Moto G5 Plus in 2017 as my daily driver. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, you got all these other specs. I mean, you got Galaxy S8. You know. You got the HTC 11 now. We know. You got the G6. We know. This still got four gigs of RAM. I don't care if it's not powerful like them. You can still multitask. Still got multi window. I still got this, you know, thing with the camera and stuff. I can still flip and you know all that stuff like that. So I got look, you know, features. I karate chop, get the flashlight, man. You know, I still got features. I still got the the fingerprint gesture. I still got Android Pay, even though I don't have NFC. I still can use Android Pay. I got PayPal. Like, what am I missing for real? Like, that's this what I'm trying to prove to people. Like, y'all sleeping on Moto G5 Plus, man. But it is what it is. Unfortunately, it seems like I am the only one in my area with one. But they selling them at Best Buy. I gave one away from Amazon. I did a giveaway. 
So, oh, oh yeah, I'm also doing another giveaway, y'all. I'm doing a giveaway for the blue R1 Plus. I did a video. We did a live streaming about that. We did a, um, I did a um, budget battle, a battle war between this phone and the blue R1 Plus. If you want a cheap phone and you don't want to spend no more than $200, it's got to be between a 2 gig of RAM model of this phone and that 3 gig uh, RAM model of the um, blue R1 Plus. So it is what it is. Those are the best right now for the budget brands. And man, I can't call this budget, man. I, I'm sorry. I cannot call the Moto G5 budget. It's not really missing it. It got a decent camera. It's, it's got the same system as the Galaxy S7. So you ever own the Galaxy S7, you're really not missing them. It's stock Android, almost. I love the launcher. Like, if you guys ain't never seen the launcher, like, check that out, man. Like, the launcher is pretty decent. And then you got all this stuff like right here. I can open my calendar right from the widget. I can open up the weather app right from the widget. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. Like, people tweaking. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I can open up the widget right from the... Man, whatever, dude. I still got my Google Now card. So, I still got my Google Now card. So, I mean... It's simplicity at its best, so but um it is what it is. I'm on CNET. I'm finna shout out to people in CNET. You know. I really don't like I don't I don't, I don't really even bug with CNET like that though. Um Android Central, I'm on there heavily. I'm on um, Mr. Mobile channel heavily. You know, MKBHD, you see my comments. I be following him on Twitter. Everybody see my comments on Twitter. Shout out to the Twitter gang, though, man. Y'all y'all going hard. I appreciate y'all following me. Subscribe to the channel. Um, shout out to the IG fam, though. Shout out to the IG fam. I do appreciate y'all following me. Um, also, hit me in the DMs. Um, speaking of DMs, you guys got to hit me in the DMs. If you're on Freedom Pop, you want uh, to be one of the winners. I'm, get, I'm doing three giveaways every Friday. I'm giving away free data. Let's see, that's another thing, man. Y'all sleeping on that free internet service. Y'all sleeping on sharing internet with everybody. That's what I like doing. I like I like giving back. So I give back, man. I give back internet. I'm giving back the internet. That's what I'm doing. We got to take back the internet. And that's what Freedom Pop doing. Taking back the internet. Giving you free data. So you can have some type of connection with your family and friends. Um, Like I'm saying, man. I love Google Home. Google Home is awesome. I like talking to it. I like it talks back. It gives me a lot of information. Tells me what's going on today in the world. I don't even have to look at my TV. I can just listen to the little speaker thing. I got the Google router too. You said Nexus 5X. I still got mine too. But uh man, I don't know, man. A lot of people, you know, now all of a sudden, if y'all seen Reddit, they saying somebody Nexus 6P blowing up. I'm like, man. I don't know. Y'all need to check your outlet ports, man. Check your outlets in the house, man. Make sure them good. And I think that's the issue. People plugging in the outlets, man. I have my 6P for almost a year now. I mean, yeah, it's a little, it's a little dingy. I'm gonna take it out the, I'm gonna take it out the uh, case though. To be honest, this one of the best designs, man. My my favorite design from the Nexus line. I would have said the Nexus 6 because it's like a big John Model X. But this is, and then right after that, Huawei. Copied it. I mean, not copied it, but they ran with the whole bar thing. You see the uh, the Huawei P9 and P10. They they went right with the um the Nexus 6P bar. So I don't know, man. It's it's still a it's still a classic. My fingerprint, my fingerprint. It got a little slow now. I I have to agree. It got a little slow now. But uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know. And I'm gonna take my six. I'm gonna take my five. Uh, my five G plus out the box. I mean, out the case too. But uh, I like this setup too. I love this setup. I don't care what y'all say about the battery hump. It's it's basically the baby model of the Moto Z. The Moto G five plus. It's the baby model of the Moto Z, and that's what I like about it. Right. If you ain't never heard of the Moto Z, look it up. Moto Z. It's got the motor mods, all right? Mods don't have the mods. I can't clap no mod or no battery case to it. I would have loved that. Zero Lemon made a battery case 
for the Moto G5 Plus. That'd be freaking awesome. Man, it better start. Somebody better start, man, because I'm getting too anticipated. But um, Google gonna talk about Android Auto. I use Android Auto on my uh, phone, man. I don't, I don't need all that fancy stuff, man. I got Android Auto. That's the app right there. Everybody should have Android Auto. If you ain't got Android Auto on your Android phone, something wrong with you. You ain't no real Android fan, boy. That's all I gotta say. You ain't about that Android life. Um. Let's see what other app I think you should have if you're an Android fanboy. Oh, don't even get me started. Google Plus. Well, if you're a Google gangster, if you if you if you if you go hard for Google, you'll get a Google Plus. Google Plus is the best social network. I can go into it right now. That's what it looks like, guys. This is Google. This is Google Plus, y'all. That's what Google Plus looks like. Google Plus is a social network for all you all on Facebook and Twitter. Google Plus is a social network. Okay, you got your home, your collections, your community, your notifications. All your notifications pop up right here. So whoever you following on Google Plus, it will show up right here on your screen. You'll get all the notifications. Shout out to the notification squad. You got your community section. I love the communities, man. Google Plus, man, they awesome, awesome. Everybody got the, everybody got the same mindset. So, collections. This is my collections, guys. This is my collections. Follow me on Google Plus. Dwight Money. I, I'll put it in the um, description box. But I got a whole bunch of collections about everything I love. Not even just technology. I got, I got what's funny on her. I got science exposed. How people getting exposed to science and stuff like that. I got reading books. It's fundamental. Because reading is fundamental. Um, of course, I got my carrier and uh, news updates. I talk about carriers and stuff like that. Encouraging words. I do um, encourage people. You know what I'm saying? Mobile gaming. You into that. I got, uh, I got my music section, of course. Um, my YouTube collection. So man, that's what I'm saying. That, that, that's how Google Google Plus works. And like I like I said, you got a uh, you know talk about sports on there. It's what it is. But uh, yeah, that's how Google Plus works. Let me go find somebody going live, man. Somebody should be starting real quick. But uh, yeah, let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think. What y'all expect from Google, man? Cause um. And they got to step the game up with Android. They got to push out some updates, man. And not only that, the OEMs, they have to push up the updates. I mean, if that's the case, then everybody else should do their own freaking thing, man. Like, let Google just have Android and everybody else do their own operating system. I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. You know, you know like with the carriers, everybody want to take over, man. Everybody want to take over. They want you to use their software. No, no, we ain't going to do that. We ain't going to deploy that out. And, and, you know, yeah, I know it's a it's a process of step-by-step -step with Android versus iOS. I know, I know. But still, but still, y'all y'all got to, man, I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all. That, that's what it is. But, um, yeah, man, your boy live in effect, trying to find out who doing what live. <laughs> um... Everything else is other stuff, so I don't know. Let me see if uh let me see if nine to five went live again. Google nine to five. But let me check my subscription box. Hold on. Okay. Okay, Google Keynote for developers. Okay, I found I found eight channel. It said live, but you know, everybody saying live now. <laughs> everybody saying live. Ain't nothing started yet. They said they're gonna begin shortly. So I don't know, man. But uh, yeah. So uh, man, Sony Sony is the only one that's pushing out 4K displays on smartphones, and everybody like, man, we only 4K. 
And that's how we felt about 2K when it was first launched. What, on a Note, what, Note 3, Note 4, or something like that? Or some other phone that came out with 2K first. And everybody was like, man, we don't need no 2K. You can split 1080, still cool. Because everybody was still using, uh, what, the Note 3, the Nexus 5. Still had the first Moto X out, so tss, nobody cared about 2K. Apple definitely wouldn't care about no dang 2K. But, you know, everybody got to jump on the bandwagon, you know. It is what it is. Um, Let's see, man. VR, um, I'm really not into VR for real. I think, I don't know, VR for phones, I don't know. I think I think each company should have a separate VR like thing. Not You should have to use your phone for VR. VR should be VR. You know what I'm saying? Like We should have to use our phones for VR for the simple fact they get real hot and drain battery. You're going to have to put it back on the charger like within 30 or 40 minutes of use. So I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend using it over for 30 minutes. But you know, people going crazy now because it's VR pouring out. People going crazy now because it's VR pouring out. So oh we got VR VR, VR porn. <laughs> Pornhub, man, they going crazy, man. Going port they going crazy. Shout out to Pornhub though. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, VR uh gaming. I think Google, man, Google should have came out with their own gaming console, man. I would, I would love to see Google come out with their own gaming console for Android. Um, just a gaming console, period. Like, not no, like, like, like no player box, like, like an Android box. And then you got your movies just strictly for games. That's what they need to come out with. But, uh, maybe, maybe, um, I don't know about the jobless car stuff, man. We we still not ready for that. With all this hacking going on with that spyware and all this ransomware and stuff, we not ready for it, man. No, it, the world is not secure yet, and it's never gonna get secure. You know what I'm saying? It's too it's it's too many things out there we can hack. I mean, people hack Google already. Like Google's been hacked already. Facebook has been hacked already. Microsoft's been hacked. Apple's been hacked. People don't even people don't even realize Apple's been hacked, man. So all you Apple fanboys, man, y'all go somewhere. Apple been hacked, man. Go, go, go. Google search it. Google it. Google it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Google it because Google because Apple has been hacked before. All right. That's nothing new. Um. But what's your favorite app though? What's your favorite app to use on any any operating system? It could be Windows, iOS, Android. I mean, I can tell them people this. Use IFTT, man. That that is like another like personal assistant without the AI. That's a personal assistant without the AI. It's easy to use. It helps you out with your social, you know, your, your social skills. <laughs> For real, it helps you out with your social skills. You got. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Google Plus, they'll help you with all that. Instead of like uploading to every single, like you gotta open and close each app to upload a photo, you can upload one photo and then it'll upload it to all your social network. If you know how to use it, that's all I'm saying. You just gotta play around with it. Play it for your likings, IFTTT. I recommend that app on iOS, Android. If Windows even support it, I recommend it on Windows Phone, but you know, Windows dead, man. Or Peter Windows, man. Fortunately, we only got Google versus Apple, man. Fortunately, they they killing me. <laughs> Apple, I mean, I, ain't, I ain't, like I said, I ain't gonna hate on Apple for that, man. I ain't gonna hate on Apple for simplicity. I, I get, it. but if you're a geek, if you're a nerd like me, man. If you're a geek, if you're a nerd like me, man, you you gonna join? You gonna join the Android industry, man? I'm just saying, you gonna join Google? You gonna join the Android Knights, the Android Elite? I'm gonna call it the Android Elite. All right, Google Elites. You go. You gonna join the Google Elites? It's a coat now. We got a coat now. So you ain't with the coat, man. You ain't about that life. Yeah, it, okay. My thing is with, with the Google and Android code is it's open source, right? So with these devices, even with the Nexus, you can do whatever you want to. Where you can root it, you can customize it, even without root, and use any carrier, you know, without being charged two hundred fifty dollars to. 
leave a contract, man. That's not and another thing, man. I don't know why y'all like contracts, man. I'm sorry. I for I will promise you that for the past two years, I, the three since 2000 and I say I say since the end of 2014, I have not been with a carry like a main carry. I have not had a main carry. I've been I've been trying everything. I even tried chat sim, no roaming. Um, like I said, I got Freedom Pop Tech now. Uh, I even got a T-Mobile Data Only Sim. I've got a Project Five. So I got I tried six carriers in the past two three years. So and it didn't really cost me jack. I mean, I bought the phones on my own. That was my own terms. And <laughs> what's the funny thing is, okay, looks like Google Keynote's about to start, guys. I don't know if y'all can see that. But uh, yeah, let me blow it up a little bit. Okay, let me blow it up a little bit. Dang, yeah, stop. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can see that. But uh, I'm going to try to get y'all to see a little bit more. There we go. I want y'all to try to watch it with me. <laughs> but yeah, man, so... Uh, yeah, they getting ready to start now, man. They getting ready to start, man. <laughs> Shout out to Brazil. What up? Fabio, what up? What up, Yang? Mr. Yang in the building. Hey, shout out to Brazil in the building, man. We watching this Google I.O. live. All right. Look at these dudes, man. I don't know if y'all can see them, man. Dang. These dudes are all out in front of the camera. All in front of the camera, man. That's cool, though. That's cool, though. I would be in front of the camera, too, like... Yo, your boy two falls at the, at the camera, y'all, all the back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, I'll be clowning, man. I'll I be going straight thuggish. No, I'm just laying. I'll be acting straight projectish. <laughs> like your boy Steve Harvey. <laughs> no, I'm just laying. <laughs> nah, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a good dude. I'll be acting all manly like like I ain't never been nowhere. But I've I, I been to conferences, like tech conferences before. I'm going to some more this, this year anyway. I'm going to some Comic Cons and all that. I just got to uh, get the times and dates. So, you know how they go, man. You know how they go. But, uh, yeah, man. It's going to be an exciting, uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, event. I'll probably unmute it for a little bit so they can show you what they're talking about. Okay, so they, they're keeping up with the bubbles. I guess, I guess they're keeping up with the bubbles. Y'all gonna get my reactions to Google I.O. So, um, I'm gonna let y'all know what I think about this stuff. And, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. It said, join in on your phone and, des and desktop. That's what's up, though. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what they said. You can do the bubbles. Okay, guys. So, so let, let's do this real quick. Let's do the, um... Let's do the bubble thing, okay? They said join in with the bubble, so we're gonna go to uh G dot C O slash bubbles. Let's see what happens. Alright, let's see what happens, y'all. That's what it said on the um thing anyway. Oh, that's pretty dope. Hey, join in on the fun, y'all. Alright, so this is what you wanna do. You wanna put in Okay, so this is what you want to do. You want to put in uh, g.co slash bubbles, and you'll get all this in. So it says you created one bubble. Okay, drag. Oh, you got to do it with the microphone. Okay. Okay, it says get ready to catch some bubbles. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. See, man, Google doing some crazy stuff, man. Look, Google doing some crazy stuff. I told y'all, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Everybody that's on uh, their, their phones, I think I think it'll work with the iOS phone too. iPhone too. Just type in g dot co slash in the search bar. Um, bubbles, and then you can join in on the bubble game. So this this is a pretty cool thing. Okay, Google. I'm just, I'm just, uh, oh, okay. Sound effects. Okay, let's see it. Let's see it. All right, check this out. Get ready to, the game is about to begin. 
What game? Drag the bubbles down to help yellow win. Drag the bubbles down. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what they're doing. Look, check this out, y'all. It's a game. Man, I'm cheating. I'm cheating, Google. <laughs> I'm cheating, y'all. Look, you can drag the bubbles down. Check that out, y'all. So you really got to be in your smartphones, man, to be doing this stuff, man. You, you ain't in your smartphone. What you got a smartphone for? I, I, I guess they want us to do this to, you know, kill time. Yellow win, like, okay. Anybody else got a, a different team? I'm on the yellow team, I guess. Any, anybody else got, like, red or blue or something like that? I'm on the yellow team. Okay, I see somebody with blue. Bubbles left. Are we counting down on bubbles? Man, I'm almost at 100. I don't know if that's slow or fast. How many punts y'all got, man? Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know, man. Okay, I got over 100 now. It said over a million, over a million bubbles left on the, on the screen right here. So I'm almost at 200, man. I'm almost at 200. Yeah, we, we doing some interactions with this um this Google. I guess it's a Google game or something. But um it might be something they, they might be trying to do with the Chrome browser or whatever. Try to bring instant games. I, I guess it's a, another way to bring instant games. Then I mean, hey, go for it. Is Facebook doing it? What y'all think about that Facebook uh messaging on uh, Google uh Facebook games, man? Anybody been playing them lately? I played it a couple times. It was alright. It was alright. You just gotta find challenges though. Which kind of suck. I mean, I wish you could just... Blue wins? Man, they said blue win. Come on, man. How did the blue team win? How did the blue team win? Y'all tell me that, man. And see, so you, you, you just hold down that. You know what I'm saying? Tap and hold down them and make bubbles. All right. They count down, man. They count down. I got 11 bubbles made. Blue wins. See, they just show blue wins again. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with them. Oh, okay. Each bubble represents like a some part of the, the, the world. So that's pretty dope. It'll tell you a little bit. It'll say, okay, this one's showing off France and stuff. All right. Okay. I'm just making bubbles, man. I'm just making bubbles. I'm just killing time. If you just um, tuned in, we, we finna watch the Google I.O. together. I'm going to give you my reactions, my thoughts to the announcements. And um, basically break down what they're talking about. Because um, a lot of people, they don't pay attention to this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially my people, they don't pay attention to this. So I got to break it down. I got to break it down to these people that use their Android phones every day. So, um, hey, if you just tuned in, Google has some type of, like, bubble thing going on. And, um, like, it, it tells you, it shows you, like, different parts of the world, what, what country the bubble came from and stuff like that. So, um, if you want to join in and play in on the game and, you know, make bubbles while we wait, um, let's see, um, you type in, you type in g.co slash bubbles and then you could you know right in you know so right now we just killing time man we just killing time oh that one was from the united states okay what's up okay this one this one uh lesburg united states shout out to lesburg you in the building lesburg you in the building i put you on google put you out there lesburg what's up okay but um yeah man um it's about to start because I'm like actually on the Google uh, YouTube channel now watching it live. Um, so, okay, Ireland, you in the building? What's up, Ireland? You in the building? Get ready to catch some bubbles. A global game is starting soon. All right, so you want to play? Um, use use that code. Go go to the Google. Um, go to G dot code. You get ready to play a game, man. We're gonna play a game live. We playing games live. This is dope, man. This is dope, man. I'm telling you. Y'all should get involved, man. Y'all should get involved. Real talk. 
You plan, you use your phones every day. You, you use it, I don't know, a lot of people use it for evil. Okay, Orangeville, United States. Shout out to Orangeville. You, you in the bubble, man. Orangeville, you from Orangeville? Shout out to Orangeville, you in the bubble. Okay, you finna get ready to play a game, y'all. I, I, I don't know what to do, though. Okay, drag, okay. Drag bubbles down, we finna do it again. All right, let, let's go to yellow team. Yellow team, where y'all at? Yellow team, where y'all at? Come on, y'all. If you're on the yellow team, come on. We got to beat the blue team. <laughs> we got to beat the blue team, man. We got to bring out all these bubbles, man. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Where y'all at? I'm over 30 now. Where y'all at? Where y'all at? I'm over 40 now. Where y'all at? Come on, man. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with your boy. Stop playing with your boy. This is global, man. Everybody could be playing this game right now. We're just dragging the bubbles down. It seems like it's hard, but it's not. Come on, y'all. Ah, I missed that one. What's up? Hey. All right, come on, y'all. <laughs> Stop playing. Stop playing. Dang, I missed all them bubbles. Come on. I'm over 100 now. I'm over 100 now. What's up? What's up? How many y'all got? How many y'all got? Man, here we go again, man. I'm, I'm, you know what? I think I'm winning, man. I think I'm winning. I think I'm going to help the yellow team, man. I think I'm the only one doing it big, man. Your boy Tufo doing the B.I.G., man. Straight up. I'm clowning. I'm clowning. I'm cheating. Heck yeah. I bet everybody doing anything Chinese, man. Y'all know y'all crazy. Them Asians, y'all know y'all wildin', man. Y'all Koreans, y'all know y'all wildin', man. I know y'all be cheating on this type of stuff. Man. <laughs> hey, y'all ain't gonna leave me behind. Forget all that. <laughs> I wanna win too. Hey, come on. Come on, I'm almost 200, y'all. What's up? What's up? Ah! Come on, man. Come on. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come on. We still got a little left. Still got a little left. I'm over 20 points. What's up? What's up? Over 20 bubbles, baby. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go 300. Let's make it a 300, man. Let's make it a 300, man. They showed each other cheating, man. Look, 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 look at that, look at that your boy clowning, your boy killing it. Yeah, your boy killing it, man. I'm about to reach the 250 mark. I'm at the 250 mark. Yep, just past 250, come on, man. I need a few more than 300. <laughs> a few more than 300 bubbles. Ah, a few more than 300, let's get it. Let's get it, let's get it, ah. Ah, oh, blue win again. Who is on the blue team, man? <laughs> Who on the freaking blue team, dog? Huh? Who is on the blue team, man? Sayo Paulo, Brazil. Shouts to Brazil again. What up, man? Shouts to Calendar. What's good? What's good, man? Shouts to um, Cedar, Cedar City. United States, Cedar City. What's up? <laughs> Man, that's crazy though, man. But um, yeah, man, it's still good. Hey, so far it's been a little interesting, man. I mean, we still waiting though. Ain't ain't nothing started. Y'all was just watching me play a bubble game. <laughs> Y'all watching me play a bubble game, man. That's crazy. Man. I get me some more. Call my coffee cold. Y'all talking one of yourselves though, man. We about to start six minutes, baby. Six minutes, we about to start this thing, man. Real talk. I told y'all I was going to be an hour early. Hour early. Let me put a little cream over here. Let me put a little cream over here. Let me see. Yeah, I probably got to charge my battery up a little bit. Juice it up a little bit. But, um, yeah, that was pretty fun. That was pretty interesting. What they had going on right there, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, but, uh. That's good. That's good. Let me get my choice. I'll be right back, y'all. It's good. I can see the little bubbles. You know? I'm going to get a little bit more juice than what they got. Oh, uh, shoot. Huh. Heck, I'm some. Man, I might pop some popcorn or something. Nah, we got Pringles. We got a little Pringles on deck. We got a little Pringles on deck. <laughs> we got a little Pringles. We, we, hey, man. Hey, what if you can live stream in a movie theater? Live stream in a movie theater. And then everybody watching the same movie with you live stream in the movie theater with your smartphone. You just can't get caught, though. You know what I'm saying? That'll be fresh, man. That'll be fresh. I wouldn't be surprised people ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? Live streaming at the movie theater. Oh, y'all getting ready to watch the Wonder Woman. 
Y'all getting ready to watch the Alien movie. Hey, I do want to go see the Alien movie, though. We can talk about movies real quick. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if I want to see that new Spider-Man Homecoming. I don't know. What y'all think about that, though? I think the new Wonder Woman might be, you know, might be decent. You know what I'm saying? It, is it Captain America in it, though, or something? Like, it, 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 like it's like in the same era as Captain America. Something like that. Something going to go down, though. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. I want to say go out. Twelve to one thirty. I ain't gonna be starting in five minutes. Five minutes, y'all. Five minutes. Five minutes, man. Got my coffee. Got got my Android devices on deck. <laughs> Six P on deck. <laughs> no. Oh, they playing again. I quit, man. <laughs> I quit. Oh snap! So I'm trying to figure out who was winning. How the hell does the blue team be winning, man? Man, they killed us by like fifty bubbles, fifty thousand bubbles, man. I don't get it. I don't get I don't get how we was how we was losing, man. We was in second place though, so but everybody know two second place ain't no winner, man. <laughs> second place ain't no winner. But um Yeah, I don't know if y'all can see that clear. I'm gonna try to slant it a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Try to slant a little bit more. But yeah, that's what that's what we got going on right now. Got my Google products on there. Project 5. <laughs> I would have brought my Google home in here, but y'all probably wouldn't be able to see it anyway. So uh yeah, that's that's, that's what we doing, man. I'm going to break down everything they're talking about. I'm going to break down everything they're talking about right here. Uh yeah, so I'm pretty sure they go. Usually, when they begin this type of stuff, they give you numbers, man. They be throwing out the numbers. What Android doing so far in 2017? Um, what the App Store doing so far? Um, what the phone market looking like? Um, all sorts of stuff. They're gonna give you some numbers, man. They're gonna give you some numbers. They're gonna. They might even let you know how many people on Android 7. How many of you all on Android 7.0? Do you even know what Android 7.0 is? Do you even care? About what Android 7.0 is. Some of you all probably still on Android 5 and don't even know it. Y'all better pay attention, man. All you got to do is go to your about, about phone section and you'll see it. It'll say Android, blah, 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 all the way down to the bottom. Come on. I did plenty of videos about it, man. Come on, man. <laughs> uh oh. Russia in the building. They throw the Russian flags. <laughs> Nah, it's, it's by Google though. They 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 work for Google, so give them a little doubt. They ain't no terrorists. <laughs> man, I'm sorry, man. My fault, man. My fault, man. That's that that's that Trump coming out of me. <laughs> I'm all right, I'm gonna stop, man. I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit, G. I'm gonna quit, man. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody in there saying Trump Nation. I would I wouldn't be surprised, man. I wouldn't be surprised, man. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Ah, get this. This 6P is going off. Oh. I'll look at this real quick. I'm looking at something personal. <laughs> oh.
My friend, she sure missed. Okay. Mm. But, uh, man, they run a little late. They always run a little late, man. They always run a little late, man. That's what it is. They always run a little late. Hey. I'm anticipating, man. I, I just wanna I just wanna see what the they got going on, man. Send you the link. Alright. Uh I'm trying to help my friend out here. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. My friend, I think she'll get ready to tune in with the stream or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and research on Twitter because obviously a lot of people on my Facebook, whatever, is not watching it. Um, it's getting ready to start, though, man. I mean, we have fun. I mean, I had fun with that little game. I ain't going to lie. I was really into it. I ain't going to lie. Um, but it's technology, man. Technology excites me, man. It's just, it's been that way, though. You know what I'm saying? Trying to let people know my Twitter. You know. So it is what it is. Dang. All right, guys, I think it's getting ready to start. Let's um, tune in the volume real quick. I got it on mute. All right. We're starting now, man. It's starting to go out. I'm trying to see if y'all can see it. Y'all probably can't really see it, but I'm going to let y'all know what's going on. Okay, so now it's a countdown. And they got this little... Um, let me tone it down just a little bit. Okay. Okay, they're counting down now, so they're starting. Story of an idea, All right? That's what's showing up on the screen. Okay. Got some character poking in the head. So I guess they're going to take us back through prehistoric times and stuff like that, man. So but that, 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 that's what's really happening right now. Um, Yeah, so it's like a little cartoon thing going on. All right, then they got like these um, posty sticks. And they they join a smiley face in the middle of it. All right, so so the little character, he in a, um, I guess he's chasing after the egg or whatever in the storm. I'm trying to figure out what, what this is all about, though. Maybe they want the kids to get involved in it or something. Maybe, maybe they want the kids to start watching this or something. You know what I'm saying? Next giveaway is Friday. I'm giving away. I'm doing a giveaway Friday for the free data and the smartphone. I'm giving away the uh, blue R1 Plus um, and, and some free internet um, data on um, Friday. I'm picking three winners though. I'm picking three winners to win for that for the internet and one winner for the uh, smartphone. And what y'all can do, y'all can comment underneath this video too saying you want to win the, the Blue R1 Plus smartphone. I'm not sure when the stream will start. It, it, it'll probably be when like, everybody get out of school and work. So definitely in the, in the evening time like I did last time. It might be at night. I might do it at night time though. I might do it around like 8 or 9 o'clock. It just depends on how my day going. What I got going for that day. So just subscribe to my channel and you'll get the update. Like hit the notification button. Okay, and that's another thing, people. I, I guess I got to show y'all how to hit the notification button 
on YouTube. All right, let me let me go to my channel for instance. All right, okay. Let me dim down this screen real quick. Ain't nothing going on right now, but okay, guys. Are you subscribing to my YouTube channel, right? It's this little bell icon. You're gonna hit the bell icon so you get my notifications. That's how you'll know. All right, that's how you. That's how you'll get a notification every time I upload something. All right, they're getting ready to start, man. Getting ready to start. Woo! I feel like I'm there, man. <laughs> feel to go ham. I love you guys too. <laughs> All right. I can't believe it's one year already. Uh, it's a beautiful day. We've been joined by over seven thousand people. And see, they're gonna be throwing out numbers, man. They're gonna be throwing out numbers. Over four hundred events in eighty-five countries. Uh, last year was the tenth year since Google I/O started. And so we moved it closer to home at Shoreline, back where it all began. Uh, seems to have gone well. I checked the Wikipedia entry. Maybe, maybe about turning this light off would be good. Now, I still can't see it, but we gonna we gonna dim the light. We gonna dim the light. We dim the light there. Use it we don't need light on. We don't need no light on. Uh, it's been a very busy year since last year. No different from my 13 years at Google. Dang. Because we've been focused ever more on our core mission. Thirty years of Google. Organizing the world. Man, thirty years. And we have been that long. For everyone, hey. approach it by applying deep computer science and technical insights to solve problems at scale. That approach has served us very, very well. This is what has allowed us to scale up seven of our most important products and platforms to over a billion monthly active users each. And it's not the not just the scale at which these products are working. Users I don't think you think a billion users use Android man, maybe. YouTube not just has over a billion users, but every single day users watch over one billion hours of videos on YouTube. Over one billion hours of YouTube. Y'all see how powerful YouTube is? I told y'all man. Stop playing. Stop playing. So the scale is inspiring to see and there are other products approaching the scale. We launched Google Drive five years ago, and today it is over 800 million monthly active users, and every single week there are over 3 billion objects uploaded to Google Drive. Not bad. Over 800 million ago, Google Drive. Google I.O. we launched Not bad. Photos as a way to organize users' photos using machine learning. And today we are over 500 million active users and every single Not bad. Well, 500 has only been a year. Not bad. Two billion photos to go. So the scale of these products are amazing, but they are all still working up their way towards Android, which I'm excited. As of this week, we crossed over two billion active devices of Android. Two billion. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's process two billion, baby. The robot is pretty happy to be behind me. So. <laughs> It's a privilege to serve users at this scale. Okay. And this is two billion, two billion Android active users. users. Okay. But computing is evolving again. We spoke last year about this important shift in computing from a mobile-first to an AI-first approach. Hmm. Mobile made us reimagine every product we were working on. We had to take into account that the user interaction model had fundamentally changed with multi-touch, location, identity, payments, and so on. Similarly, in the AI first world, we are rethinking all our products and applying machine learning and AI to solve these problems. Oh, yeah. We are doing this across every one of our products. So today, if you use Google search, we rank differently using machine learning. Or if you're using Google Maps, Street View automatically recognizes restaurant signs, street signs using machine learning. Duo with video calling uses machine learning for low bandwidth situations. And Smart Reply in Allo last year had great reception. And so today we are excited that we are rolling out Smart Reply to over 1 billion users of Gmail. It works really well. Here's a sample email. If you get an email like this, the machine learning systems learn to be conversational and it can reply and find with Saturday or whatever. Now that's dope. I like, I like the email. They should do that for like the messaging though. They should definitely do that for SMS. With computing changes. Mobile brought multi-touch. We evolved beyond keyboard and mouse. Similarly, 
we now have voice and vision as new, two new important modalities for computing. Humans are interacting with computing in more natural and immersive ways. Let's start with voice. We've been using voice as an input across many of our products. That's because computers are getting much better at understanding speech. We have had significant breakthroughs, but the pace and even since last year has been pretty amazing to see. Our word error rate continues to improve, even in very noisy... Talking about speech products. recognition. This is why if you speak to Google on your phone or Google Home, we can pick up your voice accurately, even in noisy environments. Mm -hmm. When we were shipping Google Home, we had originally planned to include eight microphones so that we could accurately locate the source of where the, where the user was speaking from. Right. But thanks to deep learning, we use a technique called neural beam forming. That's crazy. We were able to ship it with just two microphones hmm. and achieve the same quality. Hmm. Deep learning You're talking about Google Home and how the microphones work from like a different angle. It, it tried to recognize so where the voice is coming from. So. Six people in your house That's what it is. And personalized experience for each and every one. So voice is becoming an important modality in our products. Mm -hmm. The same thing is happening with vision. Similar to speech, we are seeing great improvements in computer vision. So when we look at a picture like this, we are able to understand the attributes behind the picture. We realize it's your boy in a birthday party. There was cake and family involved. And your boy That's was crazy. Happy. So we can understand all that better now. That's and crazy. Our computer vision systems now for the task of image recognition are even better than humans. So it's ast astounding progress and we're using it across our products. So if you use the Google Pixel, it has the best in class camera and we do, do a lot of work with computer vision. You can take a low light picture like this, which is noisy, and we automatically make it much clearer for you. Dang. Or coming, or coming very soon, if you take a picture of your daughter at a baseball game and there is something obstructing it, we can do the hard work, remove the obstruction. Woo! That's dope. So what are you saying with the new pixels? Or or with the pixels or whatever, you'll be able to like some in a way of let's say a child or something. They'll be able to erase it. So you can see your whole uh Okay, now you're talking about Google Lens. Okay. There's a set of vision based computing capabilities that can understand what you're looking at and help you take action based on that information. We'll ship it first in Google Assistant and Photos and it'll come to other products. So how does it work? Hmm. So for example, if you run into something and you want to know what it is, say a flower, you can invoke Google Lens from your assistant, point your phone at it, and we can tell you what flower it is. It's great for someone like me with allergies. <laughs> or if you've ever been at a friend's place and you've crawled under a desk just to get the username and password from a Wi-Fi router, you can point your phone at it, Oh, that's going to be crazy. We can automatically do the hard work for you. That's going to be crazy. Or if you're walking in a street downtown and you see a set of restaurants across you, you can point your phone because we know where you are and we have our knowledge graph and we know what you're looking at. We can give you the right information. I think that's what the Galaxy S8 doing, though. As you can see, we are beginning to understand images and videos. Hmm. All of Google was built because we started understanding text and web pages. So the fact that computers can understand images and videos has profound implications for our core mission. When we started working on search, we wanted to do it at scale. This is why we rethought our uh, computational architecture. We designed our data centers. I like his glasses, so I'm, I'm going. I'm going to that that scientist. Professor work. For this machine learning and AI world, we are. Yo, what's up, Tyler? We watching the um, the Google Owl. What we think of as AI. We watching you watching the Google Owl with me. It's not showing that great on the camera, but I'll, I'll let you know what's going on there. They are custom hardware for machine learning. They were about fifteen to thirty times faster 
on 30 to 80 times more power efficient than CPUs and GPUs at that time. Hmm. We use TPUs across all our products. Every time you do a search, hmm. every time you speak to Google, in fact, TPUs are what powered AlphaGo in its historic match against LaserDog. As you know, machine learning has two components. Training, that is how we build a neural net. We, we, you know, training is very computationally intensive and inferences what we do at real time so that when you show it a picture, we recognize whether it's a dog or a cat and so on. Last year's TPU software optimized for inference. Hmm. Training is computationally very intensive. To give you a sense, each one of our machine translation models takes a training of uh, over 3 billion words for a week on about 100 GPUs. So we've been working hard and I'm really excited to announce our next generation of TPUs, cloud TPUs, which are optimized for both training and inference. What you see behind me is one <laughs> cloud TPU board. It has four chips in it and each board is capable of 180 trillion floating point operations per second. And you know, we have designed it for our data centers so you can easily stack them. You can put 64 of that these. That is ridiculous, Google. What the hell? Computer. We call these TPU pods, and each pod is capable of 11.5. It's showing the Google servers now. Uh oh. It is an important advance in technical infrastructure for the AI era. The reason we named it, the, named it Cloud TPU is because we're bringing it through the Google Cloud platform. So Cloud TPUs are coming to Google Compute Engine as of today. Okay. Now TPUs comes to the Cloud platform. Okay. We want Google Cloud to be the best cloud for machine learning. I think you got the LG uh, we Sport want to Watch on. Customers with a wide range of hardware. Yeah, I'm giving away on Friday. I'm announcing the winner on Friday, man. Uh, including the great GPUs NVIDIA announced last week, and now Cloud TPUs. Okay. So this lays the foundation for significant problems. So we're focused on driving the shift and applying AI to solving problems. At Google, we are bringing our AI efforts together under Google.ai. It's a collection of efforts and teams across the company focused on bringing the benefits of AI to everyone. Google.ai will focus on three areas. State of the art <sighs> research, tools and infrastructure. I'm now. <laughs> I got comfortable, got laid back now. I got laid back. <laughs> so talk a little bit about these areas. Talking about research, we are excited about designing better machine learning tools. <sighs> but today, it is really time consuming. It's a painstaking effort of a few engineers and scientists, mainly machine learning PhDs. We want it to be possible for hundreds of thousands of developers to use machine learning. So what better way to do this than getting neural nets to design better neural nets? Y'all can skip. I ain't talking about nothing but machine learning. If you ain't into machine learning and AI and stuff, y'all can skip. Y'all come back in like another hour. I guess, man. I guess, man. It's the, the results are promising. To do this is hey, if you want freedom power, you gonna win regardless. <laughs> we are already approaching state of the art in standard tasks like safe art image recognition. So whenever I spend time with a team and think about neural nets building their own neural nets, it reminds me of one of my favorite movies, Inception. And I tell them, we must go deeper. <laughs> so we are taking all these AI advances and applying them to newer, harder problems across a wide range of disciplines. One such area is health. I'm mad, like I'm watching a movie, man. We, we watching a movie, right? This is a Google movie, right here. It's more cold. It's more double more. This is more AI. Man, Apple went to top of man. Apple went to touching through this. Another such area is pathology. Pathology is a very complex area. If you take an area like breast cancer diagnosis, even amongst highly trained people, agreement on some forms of breast cancer can be as low as 48%. That 
That's because the, each pathologist is reviewing the equivalent of 1,000 10 megapixel images for every case. This is a large data problem, but one which machine learning is uniquely equipped to solve. So we built neural nets to detect cancer spreading to adjacent lymph nodes. It's early days, but our neural nets show a much higher degree of accuracy, 89% compared to previous methods of 73%. There are important caveats. We do have higher false positives, but already giving the- Oh, and how many people got a pixel or nexus in the um, crowd though? Next time they, they hold up the cameras, we go, we, uh, they phones, we go uh, count how many uh, pixels or nexus in there. And we are applying it across even basic sciences. <laughs> Take biology. We are training neural nets to improve the accuracy of DNA sequencing. Deep variant is a new tool. DNA sequencing? What the? Go, what are you on, man? <laughs> Google cracking me up right now, man. He's talking about some DNA sequencing, man. What? Can more accurately identify whether or not a patient has genetic disease and can help with better diagnosis and treatment. We are applying it to chemistry. We're using machine learning to predict the problem. Android for everyone, man. Forget all that. Today it takes an Apple ain't for everyone. Android for everyone. Google is for everybody. Even iPhone users can use Google. That's why they win it, man. That's why they win it. Think about it. If Apple would support Google, Google Play Store, why, why Android ain't for you, man? It got the same apps since the iOS, man. I'm talking about Not everything we are doing is so profound. You know, we are doing even simple and fun things, like a simple tool which can help people draw. We call this auto draw. Just like today, when you type in Google, we give you suggestions. We can do the same when you're trying to draw. Dang. Even I can draw with this thing. <laughs> it look like fun and games, but pushing computers to do things like this is what helps them be creative and actually gain knowledge. So we're very excited about progress even in these areas as well. So we're making impressive progress in applied machine learning and we're applying it across all our products. But the most important product we are using this is for Google Search and Google Assistant. Mm -hmm. We are evolving Google Search. Yeah, Google Search and Google Assistant taking over, man. This is why last year at Google I.O., we spoke about the Assistant. And since then, we've launched it on Google Pixel. Look, if you get a stock Android phone, look, bro. Look. Okay, this is a Nexus. Wow, I'm going to show you how I set up. I'm going to talk more about it. Your phone. Hold on, my fault. Your phone, your message, photos. In your camera. That's not simple enough? Eh, whatever, dude. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. Man, don't do that. All my Google phones will go off. <laughs> okay, I think they get ready to talk about Google Home now. Thank you, Mike. Google, yeah, stock Android is the way to go, man. They talk about Google Home now. Oh man, I told this boy I was. Scott Hoffman. My fault. Hoffman. Scott Hoffman. Last year at I.O., we introduced the Google Assistant, a way for you to have a conversation with Google to get things done in your world. Today, as Sundar mentioned, we're well on our way. Conversation with Google to get things done in your world. Dang, how is your 6P having a boo-boo issue? 
video we saw really captures the moment. What do you say? I can't see that. Do you believe? <laughs> man, head up, whatever, man. We ain't getting that conversation. We talking about Google right now, man. You, you, you want some other stuff, man. We talking about Google right now, man. We talking about this. We talking about Google Assistant. You know what? I bet y'all don't even use Google Assistant, man. Y'all don't talk to me, man. Y'all don't even use Google Assistant. Y'all don't even be like, okay, Google, okay, Google, y'all don't even do that. Okay, Google. All my phones just went off, man. See? Let me talk about that. Exactly. Man, I don't know, dude. It might be your carrier, man. Like, like I'm saying, y'all with all these crazy carriers, y'all talk about your carrier might took over your 6P, man. Let's take the SIM card out, man. <laughs> and we're continuing to make interacting with your assistant more natural. For example, it doesn't always feel comfortable to speak out loud to your assistant. So today, we're adding the ability to type to your assistant on the phone. What? Now, this is great when you're in a public place and you don't want to be overheard. Assistants also learn in conversation beyond just words. With another person, it's really natural to talk about what you're looking at. Sundar spoke earlier about how AI and deep learning have led to tremendous strides. In Ooh. Soon, okay. Oh, yeah, man. Lens, your assistant will be able to have a conversation about what you see. Good breath, real pop in there. So they, but. To help me show you a couple examples of what we'll launch in the coming months. So, last time I traveled to Osaka, I came across a line of. All right, man. Just factory set your 6P, bro. That's all. Factory reset it and see what happens. And, and leave a Sam out of it. There's over a hundred languages, and my assistant will help with visual translation. I just tap the Google Lens icon, point the camera, and my assistant can instantly translate them into English. And now I continue the conversation. What does it look like? These pictures should match. Alright, it looks pretty yummy. Hell yeah! You have to type the name of the man, it's still making me hungry looking at the food, man. I'm gonna take that off the screen. You know what? That sounds good right about now, too. Some Chinese, man. I'm about to go to China King or something, man. <laughs> Real. They making me hungry now, man. Get some Panda, China King or something, man. Can't walk. My assistant will be able to help with those kinds of tasks, too. I love live music, and sometimes I see info for shows around town that look like fun. Now, I can just tap the Google Lens icon and point the camera at the vent marquee. My assistant instantly recognizes what I'm looking at. Now, if I wanted to, I could tap to hear some of this band's songs, and my assistant offers other helpful suggestions right in the viewfinder. Hmm. There's one to buy tickets from Ticketmaster and another to add the show to my calendar. With just a tap, my assistant adds the concert details to my schedule. Saving event. Man, that's with anybody though. That's with any any support. I had good I had good decent support with Project Five. Everybody's been cool with Project Five support team. Text now I haven't had any issues with yet. Everybody's been cool with text now. T Mobile, they always giving me the run. That's why I'm like fuck T Mobile, man. I'm sorry. F T Mobile, man. F T Mobile, man. I'm always getting the run around with them, man. I don't even know why people like T Mobile, man. That customer service is horrible. and bring the assistant to those 2 billion phones and other devices powered by Android like TVs, wearables, and car systems. And today, I'm excited to announce that the Google Assistant is now available on the iPhone. Okay, so Google Assistant with the iPhone. Yay! So all you iPhone users, you get Google Assistant. Are you happy now? You happy? Man, Apple, you done, man. You done. Google took over the iPhone, man. You can even turn on the Might as well have an Android iPhone now, man. iPhone kind of Android. So Google just dominate the mobile industry. Might as well bring an iPhone to Android, man. 
No, it's a Google Assistant app now. They just announced it. It said Google Assistant. It's Google Assistant. Google app is already available. Now that he got Google Assistant. So it's coming to iPhone, man. I told y'all, man. Google took over, man. Get out, man. Mm. Now, obviously, another aspect of being useful to people everywhere is support for video games. I'm excited to announce that starting this summer, the Google Assistant will begin rolling out in French, German, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Japanese. Hey, that's what I want to do. I want to. I don't want you to be mad. Why well, I want you to be mad? By the end of the Just year, saying. We'll also support it. I'll make you laugh. Make you cry. Hey, I don't want you to be mad though. For what? Oh, hey, and he got 10.3.2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my iPhone, the iPod Touch. Yeah. Now, of course, you can ask your assistant to get all sorts of answers from Google Search. But beyond finding information, users are also asking the assistant to do all sorts of things for them. Now, as you've already seen, the assistant can tap into capabilities across many Google apps and services. But Google's features are just part of the story. We also opened the assistant to third party developers who are building some really useful integrations. I'll turn it over to Valerie to share more about how the developer platform is getting stronger. Alright, guess we get some old stuff going on now. Hi. Okay. So the actions on Google platform. I think she got an LG watch on too. Hey, 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 LG watch is a popular. Huh? She blinging too. That watch blinging. Hey. The recipe that's on TV right now. I can work out with Fitstar, uh, ask CNBC about the news. Or my husband. <laughs> Uh oh, I see Test Plus with Text now. Hey, they got Vibrant Text Plus. I, I'm going to have to get it, man. I'm going to try Text Plus again, man. Available in more places, they'll be able to do more. Starting today, actions on Google will be supporting transactions. It's a complete end to end solution for developers, including payments, identity, notifications, receipts, even account creation. Hmm. The platform handles all the complexity. Let me show you how it will work. Okay, okay, she got the pixel on there. Oh, uh, she's showing the address. Uh oh, she finna get spammed like <laughs> and a phone number. Hey, somebody write down a phone number though. Somebody spammed the mess out of her phone number. Okay, she's showing you how to order right from Google Assistant. That's pretty tight though. That's dope. Okay, she she using Chase. Okay. Yeah, super easy. Like I was talking to someone at the store. Hmm. So here I was a new Panera customer. I didn't have to install anything or create an account. You've also probably noticed I didn't have to enter my address or my credit card. I just saved those earlier with Google, and Panera used the built-in platform calls to request the information. Now I was in control of what I shared every step of the way. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you exposed your address, your phone number, your, your uh, Visa card. <laughs> Y'all killing me, man. Y'all ain't paying attention to that. Today, we're 70 smart home companies work with the Google Assistant. Okay. So now on my Google Home or from my phone, I can lock my D Link phone. in the building. Okay, I got D Link in here. It's Vivid. I don't see Vivid. Yeah, okay, Vivid. Okay. All right, we got Vivid in the building. D Link and Vivid. Okay, Google Home, okay. Google okay. Assistant built in. Here to tell you more is Rishi Chandra. 
Okay, it's more stuff about Google Home now. Thanks, Valerie. You know, it's really hard to believe. We launched Google Home a little over six months ago. And we've been really busy ever since. Since launch, we've added 50 new features. Dang. Some of my favorites, like support for Google Shopping, where I can use my voice to order items from Costco right to my front door. Hmm. Or I can get step-by-step -step cooking instructions from over 5 million recipes. Dang. Or I can even play my favorite song just by using the lyrics. Hmm. Now in April, we launched in the UK with some great reviews. And starting this summer, we're going to be launching in Canada, Australia, France, Germany, and Japan. Shout out to them countries. And with support from multiple users, we can unlock the full potential of Google Home to offer a truly personal experience. Hmm. So now, you can schedule a meeting. Set a reminder or get your own daily briefing of my day. I talk about Google Home, they talk about how you can set calendar dates and reminders and alarm clocks and all this stuff. You could do it all at from the, the Google Home and it'll wake you up and all this stuff. Dang. Home is great at providing personally relevant information for you when you ask for it. But we think it'd be even more helpful if you can automatically notify you of those timely important messages. And we do this by understanding the context of your own life and proactively looking for that really helpful information and providing it for you. Hey, this dude look like he got an LG Wear watch, man. And relaxing and playing with the kids. I know I gotta give me a different vase too. I want like a blue one and something, blue or red. What's up? Hi, Rishi. Traveling's heavy right now, so you'll need to leave in 14 minutes to get to Shoreline Athletic Fields by 3.30 p.m. That's pretty nice. The assistant saw the game coming up on my calendar and okay. got my attention because I had to leave earlier than normal. Okay. So now my daughter can make it to that soccer game right on time. Now we're going to start simple with really important messages like reminders, traffic delays, and flight status changes. And with multiple user support, you have the ability to control the type of proactive notifications you want over time. Hmm. All right. Second, another really common activity we do in the home today is communicate with others. Mm -hmm. And a phone call is still the easiest way to reach someone. Exactly. So today, I'm excited to announce hands-free calling coming to Google Home. Hands free calling, that's what's up. Ain't gotta it's pick up the phone no more. To use. Just ask the Google Assistant to make a call, and we'll connect you. <laughs> you can call any landline or mobile number in the US or Canada completely free. Dang! And it's all done in a hands free way. Google Voice, hey, they, they need to integrate that with Google Voice too, man. They need to integrate that with the Google Voice. Man. To get the kids ready for school in the morning. <laughs> I just need to say, hey, Google, call mom. Sure, call her mom. That's crazy. So you are finally calling. What does they want three days ago? Yeah, sorry about that. They made me rehearse for I.O. on Mother's Day. Speaking of which, you're on stage right now. Say hi to everyone. Oh, hi, everyone. That's crazy. So hopefully this makes up for not calling, right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm on it. Bye. Bye. It's that simple. We're just making a standard phone call through Google Home. So her mom didn't need to learn anything new. She just needs to answer her phone. There's no additional setup, apps, or even phone required. <laughs> and since the assistant recognized my voice, we called my mom. If my wife had asked, we would have called her mom. Mm. We can personalize calling just like everything else. <laughs> and now anyone in the home can call friends, family, even businesses. Maybe on a local florist to get some flowers for your mom. <laughs> now by default, we're going to call it with a private number. But you also have the option to link your mobile number to the Google Assistant. And we'll use that number whenever we recognize your voice. So wherever you call, let's know it's coming from you. Now we're rolling out hands-free calling in the U.S. to all existing Google Home devices over the next few months. It's the ultimate hands-free speakerphone. No setup required. Call anyone, including personal contacts or businesses. And even dial out with their personal number. Y'all better get this, man. Y'all better get that Google Home, man. Get that Google Home soon. That Google Home so soon, man. Entertainment. We designed Google Home to be a great speaker, one that you can put in any room in the house or wirelessly connect to other Chromecast built in speaker systems. Well, today we're announcing that Spotify, in addition to their subscription service, will be adding their free music service to Google Home. Okay. It's even easier to play your Spotify players. Woo! Spotify! We'll also be adding support for SoundCloud and Deezer, two of the largest global music services today. 
Woo, SoundCloud. Woo, woo. Ha <laughs> he playing Pokemon I go. Yeah, no. Nah. That's dope. It's on your calendar on your TV, man. That's dope. That's dope. I got Chromecast too, man. So I'm going to have all this on my TV. That's dope, man. That's fire. That's dope. That's dope. It's really simple. Again, no remotes or phone required. In a short conversation, I found something really interesting to watch using Google Home. I can even do other things. Okay, Google, what's on my DVR? Here you go. Here we're showing how it works with YouTube TV, a new live TV streaming service that gives you live sports and shows from popular TV networks. And YouTube TV includes a cloud DVR, so I can easily play my saved episodes. Uh, play Modern Family. Okay, play Modern Family from YouTube TV. You guys have it too easy nowadays. You can just lay around in the stack saying, okay, Google, dim the kitchen lights. Sure thing. Okay, Google. Show me a video of a kangaroo playing Batman with a pirate. Start. Play it on YouTube. What? <laughs> <laughs> I had a similar reaction the first time I saw it. <laughs> That's tight though. Man, we getting lazy now, man. Google making us straight lazy, man. It's crazy. Google making us straight lazy. This just crazy right here. And, hey, that's my reaction to it, man. That's what it is. Google live stream and my reaction. It's crazy, man. That's insane, man. 
Man, what's the point? It ain't, man, pretty soon ain't gonna be no point of having a tablet, a phone, nothing. You can just talk to Google and just say, okay, Google, do this, do this. What's next? Google, Google, whip me up some, uh, whip me up some food. <laughs> That's dope, though. This is the secret ingredient behind Google Photos. Google Photos go hard, man. See, everybody should be using Google Photos. Don't be using that stock dollar. I mean, that, that stock stuff that from your OEMs, man. Uploading more than 1.2 billion photos and videos per day. Of course, man. You know what I mean? Girls take selfies, man. 1.2. 1.2. But that, it should be more than that. All these. I ain't even going to say a word, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody using Google Photos, man. Everybody using Google Photos. It might seem like photo sharing is a solved problem. After all, there's no shortage of apps out there that are great at keeping you and your friends and family connected. Mm -hmm. But we think there's still a big and different problem that needs to be addressed. Let me show you what I mean. Let me guess. He's going to fix it. Identifies the people in the pictures that you took, so you, you be like, "Well, they like the picture." Then I'm like, "I'm just sure with that person that's in the picture." Hmm. Suggested sharing. That's that's called suggested sharing. Like it's more. Maybe it's more than one person that's in the picture. And you don't want to share with everybody, but you want to show that one particular person that's in the picture. You send to them. So. Okay. <clears throat> oh boy, here we go again. So you're not technical people, machine learning. That's what it is. That's what that's what Google does with Google Photos. It learns about faces, places, and things. That's kind of funny. Nobody using the Nexus now. Everybody using the Pixel. Huh? Sweet pictures though on Google Photos. I don't really know. Google Photos recognized this was a meaningful moment. It selected right shots and it figured out who he should send it to based on who was in the photo. That's crazy. In this case, it's John B, Jason, and a few others who are also at the event. <laughs> now you want me to get the pixel, man? I got the Nexus, dog. I got the Nexus. We good, man. We good. We got Google Photos. Everybody got Google Photos, man. We good, man. We good. Everybody's doing this. You got you ain't got nothing to worry about. You got Google Photos, iPhone users got Google Photos, Android users got Google Photos. We got Google Photos, man. See, he just mentioned it. Google Photos works on any device, even iOS. So now nah, nah, he, he's talking about uh, sharing it with iOS users. Hmm. Google Photos automatically identifying and suggesting the right ones. Hmm. John, we can review the suggestions and then simply tap add it. Now all of the photos are finally pulled together in one place. Okay. Dave, get some photos, he's actually in. Which is great, because a home for all your photos really should include photos of you. Right. Now even though 
Who suggests that sharing takes the work out of sharing? Sometimes there's a special person in your life who you share just about everything with. Yeah. Your partner, your best friend, your sibling. Would it be great if Google Photos automatically shared photos with that person? <laughs> For example, I would love it if every photo I ever took of my kids was automatically shared with my wife. And that's why today we're also announcing shared libraries. They were late, man! Everybody even saw the clap for this! <laughs> like, sure, libraries! We're now looking at my Google Photos account. For the menu, I now have the option to go... Alright, man, you better not have no little hoochies. <laughs> Your wife watching, bro. <laughs> you better not have no little tiny... Uh... <laughs> only photos of the kids, or only photos from a certain date forward, like when we first met. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and share all of them. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. Ignore. So let's switch to her phone to see what the experience looks like from her end. Hey, he got her account? Uh oh. Uh oh. She can now go to see all the photos that I've shared with her and get access easily from the menu. Okay, now we see her email account, dog. You need to blur that out. This is what I all get. People always talk about, you need to be careful while you blur it these professionals they ain't even got theirs blurred out, man. These developers in. All these CEOs, they ain't even got their emails blurred out, man. Let's just start spamming everybody email, man. Everybody email you, you find on Google Out, man. It's just spam the head. It's spam. It's spam. <laughs> Nah, now the kids famous, man. Now, now we know what the kids look like now. Nah, all these, man. Come on, man. Them better be fake pictures, though. Nah, I don't look fake. I don't look real. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, dude, got like a oh. This <laughs> dude crazy. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> All right. So, using nothing more than the standard camera app on my phone, I've gone ahead and taken one photo with my kids and one photo with all of you here in the audience. Google Photos is going to back these two photos up. It's going to share them with Jess, and then it's going to recognize the photo that has kids in them and automatically save just that one to her library, like you can see right here. <laughs> That's dope. Are you okay? Finally, Jess and I can stop worrying about whose phone we're using to take the photos. All the photos of family are in my Google Photos app, and they automatically appear in hers, too. Mm. And best of all, these family photos are part of both of our search results, and they're included in the great collages, movies, and other fun creations that Google Photos makes for us. But notice how only the photos with the kids showed up in Jess's main view. But because I shared my entire library with her, I can simply go to the menu, and Jess can now see all the photos, including the one with all of you. That's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. So you could you could share specific libraries with people, and then whichever library you share that with, they'll get it too. So as soon as you upload it to your phone from the Google Photos, and y'all got the same library um, album, it'll pop up on their account. Cool. Finally, we know sharing doesn't always happen through apps and screens. There's still something pretty special about looking at and even gathering around an actual printed photo. But printing photos and albums today is hard. 
You have to hunt across devices and accounts to find the right photos. Select the best among the duplicates and blurry images. Upload them to a printing service. And then arrange them across dozens of pages. Mm -hmm. It can take hours of sitting in front of a computer just to do one thing. Right. Thankfully, our machine learning in Google Photos already does most of this work for you. Damn. Today, we're bringing it all together with the launch of photo books. Uh-oh. Google Photos got photo books now. So it'll make, it'll make you a photo book. That's what's up. clean and modern design, but the best part is that they're incredibly easy to make, hmm. even on your phone. That's what's up. It used to take hours, now only takes minutes. Hmm. I recently made a book for Jess on Mother's Day, and let me show you just how easy and fast that was. First, thanks to unlimited storage, all my life's moments are on. Oh, here you go, bragging about unlimited storage, man. I got unlimited storage, too. It's called a Mono G5 Plus, man. <laughs> Called SD card. <laughs> Use the SD card. Photos of Jess, Ava, and Lily. There they are. All right. I thought I took more photos. <laughs> All right. So why don't we just go and pick another set of photos? Dave, that one's not coming up. Just, it'll be a fun Mother's Day gift for her. She'll get a different surprise. So I'll select a bunch of photos here. And the good news is, we have to figure out which are the right photos and which are the good ones, because this is where Google Photos really shines. I'm just going to go ahead and hit plus. Okay. Select photo book. Okay. I'm going to pick a hardcover book. We offer both a soft cover and a hard cover. And notice what happens. Google Photos is going to take the best photos for me automatically, automatically suggesting a photo for this case. How awesome is that? And it's even going to go ahead and lay them all out for me. All that's left for me to do is make a couple of tweaks, check out, and in a few days, I'll end up with one of these beautiful printed photo books. That is dope. And soon, we'll make it even easier to get started, applying machine learning to create personalized photo books you'll love. So when you go to photo books from the menu, you'll see pre-made books tailored just for you. Hmm. Your trip to the Grand Canyon. Time with your family during the holidays, or your pet, or even your kids' artwork, all easily customizable. We'll even notify you when there are new photo book suggestions. Hmm. Photo books are available today in the US on photos.google.com, and they'll be rolling out on Android and iOS next week, and we'll be expanding to more countries soon. All right, so photo books coming for Android and iOS next week, y'all. So, it's a great example of machine learning at work. So those are the three big updates related to sharing in Google Photos: suggested sharing, shared libraries, and follow and books. books. Three new features built from the ground up with AI at their core. I can't wait for all of you to try them out. Hey, y'all taking so, over, man? <laughs> hey, y'all taking over, y'all? <clears throat> Damn. We're also taking different types of photos, not just photos to capture a personal memory, but as a way to get things done. Whiteboards we want to remember, receipts we need to file, books we'd like to read. And that's where Google Lens and its vision-based computing capabilities comes in. It can understand what's in an image and help you get things done. Scott showed how Google Lens in the Assistant can identify what you're looking at and help you on the fly. But what about after you've taken the photo? There are lots of photos you want to keep and then look back on later to learn more and take action. Mm. And for that, we're bringing Google Lens right into Google Photos. Let me show you. So let's say you took a trip to Chicago. There's some beautiful architecture there. And during your boat tour down the Chicago River, you Okay, Google Lens go, go, come to Google Photos. Which building is which later on. Okay. Now by activating Lens, you can identify some of the cool buildings in your photos. Oh, so snap! So you can identify a building and you get directions and, and a phone number to that particular building that you took a picture of. 
That's insane, man. Dang. And the screenshot that your friend sent you of that bike rental place? Just add in lens. You can tap the phone number and make the call right from the phone. Dang. That's going to be called, man. Google Lens need to hurry up, man. Google Lens need to hurry up so we can demo that. Google Photos later this year and we'll be continually improving. Oh, man. Later. I, I, oh, you know what? That's probably going to be something they come with the Pixel 2. That's what he hitting. It's gonna come with the pixel too. All this new stuff gonna come with the pixel too. That's what he hitting. Hey, what's up? Right on. Shaniqua? That's that's how you say it, Shaniqua. <laughs> okay, they showing video clips now. I guess it's YouTube. This YouTube stuff. So you might be talking about YouTube stuff now. Yo, Crystal Key! Yo, Crystal Key! KK! Yo, I seen Crystal Key, y'all. Where's KBHD at, man? Okay, dude, perfect. Yeah, I remember them. Haha, <laughs> thanks. They have some amazing videos on YouTube, though. I ain't gonna lie. Man, I remember that dude. What's that dude now? I seen his video before. Dang, they saved the dolphin and stuff. Ooh. Oh, Lord, they showed a cop doing the name name. Oh, my God. <laughs> YouTube, yeah. I knew they was talking about YouTube. MKBHD should be coming out, man. <laughs> Why you got MKBHD? Yeah, I like pizza. Who don't like pizza? I am thrilled to be here at my first ever I.O. on behalf of YouTube. What? What? I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to give my uh, Russell Westbrook a what? Dude. A billion a month, man. Man, I wish I could get a billion views a month, man. You know, I'd be super rich right now. <laughs> oh, we have to go to my night job tonight, man. I swear. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> I had a billion views a month. I quit. <laughs> For real, I, I just be doing YouTube all day, man, like this. I'd be doing it all day like this. Okay, and, and, well, what she just said, people, YouTube is open. Anybody can use YouTube. You don't have to be a professional at YouTube. Anybody can use I'm not a professional. I use YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. I have almost a 1,000 videos uploaded on YouTube. A few of them at 100,000 views on YouTube. I'm not a professional. So anybody can use YouTube. Your kids can use YouTube. You can use YouTube. Your grandmama can use YouTube. Anybody can use YouTube. I'm just saying. All right? So start using YouTube, live stream, upload videos. Man, stop playing. Go. You, you're right. Comments, mobile live stream, all that. Like she's just saying, she's just saying basically it's not just a one way broadcast. I mean, like you guys who are doing, leaving a comment while it's a streaming, I'm communicating with my viewers. I'm communicating with anybody that's watching this video. You have to comment though. I can't see you. Only can see, okay, it says I have no viewers right now, but I'm pretty sure somebody's watching this. But until you start commenting, hitting the comment button and saying, what is this? What are you doing? La la la. That's how I know you exist. You know I exist because I'm viewing. I'm you watching. You know I exist.
that mm. would enable him to go back to work. Dang. They then applied this technology for a young boy who was born without any fingers. Ooh. So inspired by this video, the professor posted a single comment on the video asking for volunteers with 3D printers to help print affordable prosthesis. Hmm. The network has since grown into a community of over 6,000 people who have designed, printed, and distributed these prosthetics to children in over 50 countries. That's good. So, okay, wait. Okay, what she was just saying, she was saying that somebody had posted up a video about a prosthetic, um, a kid with a, don't have a hand or something like that. And a professor commented, right? So, he commented to the video, was like, yo, if you guys can make 3D, pros, 3D um, hands or something like that, you know, we're going to make a prosthetic hand in. Before you know it, they got like 6,000 people in the community. So, hey, numbers, man. It's all about the numbers, man. Sixty percent come on watch time on, on mobile devices. Isn't the one in your pocket. It's the one in your living room. Our watch time in our living room is growing at over six ninety percent a year. Mm. So let's now welcome Sarah Ali, head of living room products, to the stage to talk about the latest features in the living room. Okay, we're gonna talk about YouTube in the living room. I ain't gonna lie, I, I, I watch YouTube on, in the living room TV on the Rock Cool TV all day. Earlier today, you heard from Rishi about how people are watching YouTube on the TV via the assistant. Mm -hmm. But another way people are enjoying video is through the YouTube app. Which right. It's available on over half a million smart TVs, game consoles, and streaming devices. Hmm. And that number continues to grow around the world. Of course. So when I think about why YouTube hey, she's is cute. so <laughs> it isn't just about the size of the screen. It's about giving you an experience that TV. Yeah, she married too. You can see the right. <laughs> the largest library of on demand content. Second, our recommendations build channels and lineups based on your personal interests and what you enjoy watching. And third, it's a two-way interactive experience with features like voice control. And today, I'm super excited to announce that we are taking the interactive experience a step further by introducing 360 video in the YouTube app on the big screen. Wow. And you know that you can already watch 360 videos on your phone or in your daydream headset, but soon you'll be able to feel like you're in the middle of the action right from your couch and on the biggest screen you own. Hmm. Now, one of my personal interests outside of work is to... Alright, so 360 uh, viewing coming to the living room uh, TVs, come to the TV uh, YouTube app. So, let's do a voice search. All right. Aurora Borealis 360. Great, let's choose that first video. And now, using my TV remote, I'm able to pan around this video Checking out this awesome view. That's dope. That is dope. Traveling is great. Okay, so you, so she was demoing that you use your uh, TV remote to do the 360 uh, roll around and stuff like that, so you can view the whole you can do the whole thing. Okay. 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 Okay.
YouTube special is the relationships that creators are able to foster. Creators like me, okay. She's gonna talk about creators like me. I'm a creator. I you know I create content for y'all. This is content. That's what she's talking about. Creators live streaming on YouTube has grown by 4x. 4x. She said 4x. And we want to do even more to deepen the connection between creators and their fans during live streams. That's why earlier this year we rolled out a new feature called Super Chat. Okay, they got Super Chat. Super Chat. Hey, they ain't making me mad. Come on, see, y'all can make money, man. Told y'all, y'all can make money. There ain't nobody using the super chat on mine. Hold on, man. What's the deal? The slow mo guys. It's great to have you. So let's pull up their live stream. And just look, chat is flying. Now, I love the slow mo guys. Dang, the chat. Man, they chat going hell. So I'm going to super chat them. Okay, she goes super chat. Oh, so y'all gonna be vidding, man. <laughs> y'all gonna be vid, man. Who gonna give me the most money, man? Who gonna give me the most money? Super chat me, baby. Super chat me. <laughs> donate, donate to my channel right now. Come on. Ten dollars, twenty dollars. Bid fifty, honey. <laughs> man, see that would be you would think that's so easy though to make money off a of live chat with super chat. Make money like Make a hundred dollars. If you can make a hundred dollars one time, hundred dollars, man, that's a hundred dollars you made in one day in less than an hour, or de depending on how long your stream is. That's that's you made more than your your minimum wage job, man. Y'all tripping, man. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me, y'all. Y'all like losing y'all technology the way y'all supposed to. That's what she's trying to tell y'all. Y'all can make money, man. Start making money. What? And that is going to signal our friends back there on the lawn to unleash a truckload of water balloons at the slow mo guys. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. That's right. But every dollar, we're going to take another balloon. So more money means more balloons. Although I did hear a guy over here go, oh, we're going to totally nail these guys. All right. That's got to be at least four dollars right there. So yeah, each dollar donated goes to the cause that Susan mentioned earlier, the e Naval Network. Okay, so, how much do you think we can send? I can start at a dollar and go anywhere upwards from there, so, it's for charity. How do we think, uh, 100? How'd that sound? Okay, higher, higher, 200? 200? How about $500 for 500 balloons? Ooh! $500 for 500, dollars for 500 balloons, oh my god. That's crazy. Uh oh. Five hundred. Uh oh. Oh, they got slammed. Oh, they got slammed. Thank you everybody for your help. 
That's, that's so that's how super chat works, man. If you donate, your 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 chat will be up first, and then everybody will see, oh, okay, you giving out money or you passing money to somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's what super chat is. So. You want to be a super subscriber? You want to be a super viewer? You donate, and let people know, yo, support this, support this person. I support this person. That's how that works. <laughs> that slow mo right there, yeah. Damn, they was getting hit hard. Now some of the balloons were splashing though. Oh, them two right there over the head. That was man. That was that was crazy. All right, so you two donated to prosthetics. That's what's up. So that 360 living room demo and the super chat demo, those are just two examples of how we are working to connect people around the globe together with video. Now, I hope that what you've seen today is that the future of media is a future of openness and diversity. A future filled with conversations and community. And a future that works across all screens. Together with creators, viewers, and partners, we are building the platform of that future. Thank you, I.O. And please, please welcome me and, join, and, and uh, Dave Burke joining us to talk about Android. All right, finally, we're about to get talked about Android, y'all. Get talked about Android. Ah, Android. Dang, I think that's from the storm out there. That wing is super strong out there, man. They better hurry up, man, for the lights or something go out, man. <laughs> it's been a storm out there, man. It's windy as heck out there. Anyway. All right, Android. Woo! Finally. <laughs> oh, man, I've been dying. What time is it? Damn, I ain't gonna be talking about Android that long then. Two billion monthly active devices. They said devices. They ain't say users. They said two billion monthly active devices. I mean, you, you can have one user using three devices. You got your watch, you got your tablet, Google Home, uh, your phone, TV. Android TV. Actually, you got five. Two billion. That's insane, man. Oh, okay. He's just talking about smartphones and tablets. Okay, now you're talking about Android Wear 2.0. Tommy Hill figure, what? <laughs> I guess. Mont Blanc? Okay. Volvo and Audi? Okay. Vo uh, Volvo and Audi got Android Auto. Damn. Bring Google Assistant to Android TV and Chromecast. Remember that, y'all. Damn. Okay, you talking about Chromebook, 60% in schools from kindergarten to tw uh, 12th grade. That's what's up. Oh, they're advertising a new Google Play logo, too. I got that on my phone. 
All y'all gotta do is, uh, and that's another thing I'm talking about on uh, my next videos, uh, APK mirrors, give you the latest updates and installations on your, on your device. So I'll talk about that later. Let's talk about Android O right now, though. Okay, if you talk about two themes, Android though. Fluid experiences. Okay, now you got another thing called vitals. Okay, talking about mag, uh, talking about maximizing the performance and battery life. That's what's up. <laughs> okay, he got he got the black pixel out. I don't know if he got the X. I think that's the regular pixel. I don't think he got the XL. Nah, that's the XL. It looks, looks too big in his hand. He got the XL. <laughs> Okay, so he's talking about YouTube and the, the, the apps he downloaded. Whoa! Okay, so they they, they bring in um, hey, what what you call it? Out in video in out video um thing. That's what's up. Okay, now he's talking about ooh, picture and picture. Um, okay. Okay, he was using Google Duel, and then he was looking up his calendar while he was in the video. So that that's that's hot. But you know what? Don't Facebook Messenger do that? I think Facebook Messenger does that already. Where you know you're in the Facebook Messenger video and you can. Okay, yeah, I think I did see that already. Dang, Google, you late to the game again, man. Oh. Okay, you talking about notification dots now. Okay, they're going to use dots instead of numbers. I, I'm glad because I don't. Oh, so now it's going to be instant. Uh, well, not instant, but like. Okay, they got the little 3D touch. That's what they want to call it. Little 3D touch thing. When you see the dot, you can instantly comment right from holding down on your screen. So like, okay, I can try to demo something like that real quick. All right. So you got your phone. Like you miss a you miss a, a call, and then you can instantly like call that person or something like that. that I think that's what you're talking about. So, and that's how that's gonna work. Instant login, okay. Okay, so what he said, like, if you if you got, like, let's say you got Facebook on Chrome or whatever browser, and you got the Facebook app, but you never logged in with the Facebook app, and it'll suggest you, like, your username and stuff. If you just hit on your username, it has your password already saved. That's what autofill is. And then you instantly log in because it already has your info saved. So that's what's up. Okay, now you talk about smart text selection. Okay. Okay. Now we know from user studies that phone numbers are the most copied and pasted items. The second most common are named entities like businesses, people, and places. You know, we're applying a device machine learning 
in this case a fee for neural network, to recognize these more complicated entities. So watch this. I can double tap anywhere on the phrase own objects, and all of it is select for me. No more fiddling around with selection handles. Oh, okay, so okay with double tap, you can double tap anywhere in between old house or something like that. Okay, okay, you you want to copy an address? It'll give you um, it'll give you maps format, cut and copy, and then some other features. Then when you do the you highlight the number, it'll give you call. And then when you uh, highlight the email address, they'll say send the Gmail or some some stuff like that. So that's something that's something coming in Android though. Be on the lookout. Machine learning once again. That's how you do it. That, that's that's what you talk about. Machine learning. Okay, talking about TensorFlow Lite. Okay, if it's talk about Vitals now for Android though. Stephanie, she gonna talk about. Hi everyone. Okay, so all the features Dave talked about are cool. But we think your phone's foundations are even more important. Battery life, security, startup time, and stability. After all, if your battery dies at 4 p.m., none of the other features that Dave talked about really matter. <laughs> so in O, we're investing in what we call Vitals. Keeping your phone secure and in a healthy state to maximize power and performance. We've invested in three foundational building blocks. Security enhancements. Okay, they're talking about security enhancements, OS optimizations, and developer tools. First, security. For Vitals. Android was built with security in mind from day one. So basically, Vitals is going to be treated like, like your doctor or something. Like, something like that. It's going to, it's going to treat your phone like... Like any help support us. <laughs> okay, over a billion devices. They scan over 50 billion apps verified every single day. Dang. Hmm. See, a lot of you all don't know that most of them apps on Android don't come with stuff. So that, that's, that's why I say you you watch these type of things, man. Learn. Go to the Google website. It's an Android website. Okay, now they talk about Google Play Protect. This for Android O though. So once Android O gets out, everybody will be experiencing this. Okay, so now boot time will be faster. Now, this is really cool stuff, like concurrent compacting garbage collection and code locality. Okay. But all you really need to know is that your apps will run faster and smoother. So hmm. Google Sheets, aggregate performance over a bunch of common actions is now over two times as fast. And that's all from the OS. There are no changes to the app. But we found apps could still have a huge impact on performance. Some apps were running in the background, and they were consuming tons of system resources. That's what I'm talking about, man. Okay, she's talking about a, a, apps running in the background, consuming a lot of battery. Background location okay. and background execution. These boundaries put sensible limits on usage. They're protecting battery life and freeing up memory. 
Now, our third theme is helping developers build great apps. And here, I want to speak directly to all the developers in the audience. Wouldn't it be cool if Android's engineering team could show you what causes performance issues? Today, we've launched Play Console dashboards that analyze every app and pinpoint six top issues that cause battery drain, crashes, and slow UI. Okay, all right, developers, y'all better pay attention. We show how many users are affected and provide guidance on the best way to fix. Now, imagine... So, so for the developers, they're having this little thing called developer tools in Android O, where the, the thing where, like, Android Studio profilers, it will identify what's causing the app to mess up. And yeah, like the top six problems, so then they'll know what to go in and fix. So this is very good. For example, on CPU, you can see every thread. You can look at the call stack and the time every call is taking. You can visualize where the CPU is going, and you can jump to the exact line of code. Okay, so that's Android Vitals. That's cool. All right, so Android O should fix all our problems. <laughs> Majority of our problems, man. Okay, Kali. I'm going to sign up, man. I got my 5X 6P on deck. Well, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. They ain't missing no Nexus, though, man. You probably thought we were done talking about Android O, but I'd like you to hear some more about Android. And from that, please welcome Samir. Thank you. Okay. See, and this is what I'm talking about, man. Y'all y'all hating on the Google Pixels. Y'all hating on the Nexus, man. We get to try all that stuff first, man. <laughs> Shout out to the Android beta squad, man. All right. You got some more. You got some more. Samir. Samir. Sammy. Man, they said it's more Android users in India than the US. What? Dang, man. I guess I guess I was took over in US, man. That's messed up. We gotta bring Android back to the US, man. We gotta bring it back to the US, man. India killing us, man. Dang. <laughs> Shout out to my indie boys though. Okay, so now you're talking about making it more affordable for Android users in the U.S. Around right. limited data connectivity and multilingual use. Okay. We learned a lot from our past efforts here with Project Svelte and KitKat and the original Android One program. 
We felt like the time was right to take our investment uh -oh. to the next level. Uh -oh. So today, I'm excited to give you a sneak peek into a new experience we're building for entry-level Android devices. Internally, we call it Android Go. Android Go focuses on three things. Android Go? Optimizing the latest release of Android to run smoothly on entry-level devices. Okay, you're talking about the entry-level phones, okay. Second, a rebuilt set of Google apps that use less memory, storage space, and mobile data. Okay. And third, a version of the place... See, he's talking about data, man. Using less data, see? Because a lot of people can't afford limited data. So, Android Go... Okay. On Android O devices with one gigabyte or less of memory. What? We still talk about one gigs. Oh my god, man! I can't believe this. First, let's talk about the operating system. For manufacturers to make more affordable entry level devices, they're like the Moto E. Has to come down. Let's take one example. Memory is an expensive component. I guess so now. So, okay, low the low entry level ones is five hundred twelve megabytes, and then up to one gig. So, that's gonna be dope, though. Okay, so now you talk about data usage and. Using up your data and are also getting smarter about data. For example, on these devices, the Chrome data saver feature will be turned on by default. Data saver Data saver will be turned on by default in the Chrome browser. So now we're making the savings more visible here in the UI. In aggregate, this feature Now that's dope, man. See they, they copy and see they learned it from Opera Mini. Oh, what a, um, it's another app showing that stuff like that. Okay, so the people in India got YouTube Go, so I guess they're going to bring that to the U.S. or oh, entry-level entry uh, countries. We're not entry-level, though, man. It sounded like that's a Model E, though. <laughs> Huh. But my favorite feature of YouTube Go is the ability to save videos while you're connected so you can watch them later when you might not have access to data. And if you want to See, this is what I was talking about people download. Okay, you talking about downloading and having offline. Oh, YouTube Go offline sharing. Directly and share the files across. Oh, wow. Using any of your mobile data at all. Wow. That's dope. Okay. See, I, I download. That's why I need that. I download. I got Wi-Fi at the crib. I download everything before I leave leave the house for work or something like that or before I go out and about my way. I download whatever I need. I download it, man. I got plenty of, I got plenty of memory. That's what your memory, that's what your storage for. It's to download. It's not to it's freaking have on standby. What? Come on, man. Okay. All right, you finna demo something real quick. Okay, he using the Pixel too. And using G board. Okay, he using the G board. Which means how are you in Hindi? The transliteration automatically gives me Hindi script. Okay. That's pretty cool. Now see I want to ask her how my IO speech is going. But I don't know how to say that Hindi at all. I can use the built in Google Translate feature. Ooh, the built in Google Translate feature. Nah, I ain't saying that. Anybody seen that built in Google Translate feature? Huh. <laughs> My family is apparently a tough audience. All right. <laughs> well, the Google apps are getting goified. What has always propelled Android forward 
is the apps from all of you. And no surprise, many of our developer partners have optimized their apps already. So to better connect users with these experiences, we'll be highlighting them in the Play Store. One example is right here on the Play's homepage. Okay, so I think what he's saying is the Android Go is going to highlight the light versions of the apps in Google Play. So it's going to recommend you using the light apps and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Useful offline state, 10 megabyte APK size, better battery and memory performance. So, so the, the level entry smartphones for Android, they're gonna have the light versions of the apps. So it'll be, it'll be less uh, on your storage, less on your data, less on your battery. Okay, so the first Android Go phones will be coming out next year. Okay, VR and AR next, man. Now it's going on longer than I thought. Let me remind people I'm still live streaming, so they can tune in. Man. Virtual virtual reality. With apps like Street View, and you can visit other worlds with apps like Hello Mars. There's already a great selection of daydream phones out there, and we're working with partners to get daydream on even more. First, I'm pleased that LG's next flagship phone, which launches later this year, will support daydream. There's another. I'm excited to announce that the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus will add daydream support this summer for the software update. Okay, so the Samsung Galaxy S8, S8 Plus will come with Daydream. Starting this summer with an update. Okay, so now you're talking about just VR for VR. Exactly matches your movement in the real world. 
And it works by using a handful of sensors on the device that look out into your surroundings. And that means it works anywhere. There's no setup, no cameras to install, and with it, you really feel like you're there. Now, just as we did with Daydream Ready smartphones, we're taking a platform approach with standalone headsets, working with partners to build some great devices. To start, we worked with Qualcomm to create a Daydream standalone headset reference design, a sort of device blueprint that partners can build from. Okay, talk about Daydream and Qualcomm now, partnering up. <laughs> HTC and Vive VR. And we're delighted to be working with them on a standalone VR headset for Daydream. And second, Lenovo. We've been partners for years working together on Tango. Now we're excited to work with them on VR. These devices will start to come to market later this year. So that's the update on VR. Great momentum with apps, more Daydream ready phones on the way, and a new category of devices that we think people are going to love. So let's turn to augmented reality. Oh, Lord. Now you're talking about AR. Augmented reality for those that don't know about AR. With Pokemon Go. Now you're talking about Pokemon Go. That's a prime example. Pokemon Go's AR. How cool it can be to have digital objects show up in our world. Well, we've been working in this space since 2013 with Tango, a sensing technology that enables devices to understand space more like we do. Two years ago, in 2015, we released a developer kit. And last year, we shipped the first consumer-ready Tango phone. And I'm excited to announce that the second-generation Tango phone, the Asus Zenfone AR, will go on sale this summer. Now, looking at the slides, you may notice a trend. The devices are getting smaller. And you can imagine far more devices having this capability in the future. <laughs> it's been awesome. I just talked about Asus uh, AR coming soon, so... That's why we've been working with the Google Maps team on a service that can give devices access to Talking about Tango and Google Maps working together. Indoors. It's kind of like GPS, but instead of talking to satellites to figure out where it is, your phone looks for distinct visual features in the environment and it triangulates. Man, it's starting to look like the movies now, man. We call this VPS, Google's Visual Positioning Service. VPS, Visual Positioning Service. Mm. Oh snap! So he's saying, with this technology, if you're going into like a hardware store or something, you're looking for like a hammer or nail or some particular nail, the um the technology will the VPS feature will take you directly um to that item based on like dots and stuff like that. So it give you it give you uh. It'll, it'll give you directions and you just follow the directions and store visual positioning. So that's gonna be sick, man. What Apple doing? What Apple doing? Apple ain't doing that. Y'all need to be learning this, man. I told y'all, man. Apple ain't doing this stuff. Android doing, man. Android, Android helping your life, man. Apple ain't. How else ain't helping your life, man? So, so look out for the new Tango phones, man. Asus got one coming this summer. The uh, Lenovo phone already out, though. Okay, you're talking about education now. Uh oh, so AR in schools, dang, that's gonna be sick, man. This is gonna make kids lazier, man. They ain't gonna wanna do that now.
genes, things that we can't see. And so the most exciting thing for me with the AR technology was that I could see kids get an aha moment that I couldn't get by just telling them about it. The minute I saw it pop up on the screen, it made me get up and walk to it. We actually get to turn around and look at things from all angles. So it gave us a nice perspective. See if you can figure out what that might be based on what you know about the respiratory system. I got to see where the alveoli branched off and I could look inside them and see how everything worked, which I never saw before, and it was really, really cool. Hmm. AR, in, AR in schools. That might be useful. I'm giving that for like science class, yeah. Definitely for science class. Just delighted with the response we're seeing so far. We'll be rolling this out later in the year. So, VR and AR, two different flavors of what you might call immersive computing. Computing that works more like we do. We think that's a big idea. And in time, we see VR and AR changing how we work and play, live and learn. And all that I talked about here, these are just the first steps. But we can see where all of this goes, and we're incredibly excited about what's ahead. Thanks so much. Back to Sundar. Okay, so in the future, AR and, AR and VR is going to help our workplaces. So that's, that's pretty cool. Apple, once again, ain't doing it. Microsoft sort of doing it, but I think Google's going to beat, beat everybody out. With the AR and VR in the workplace and schools, Google gonna take over. Man, Google already took over, man. Forget all that, man. Y'all hate, y'all hate on Google, man. But y'all use Google every day, man. Stop playing. Okay. All right, so now it's like another video thing going on. You got words on the screen, showing pictures and video clips and stuff. I think, they, I think they see, yeah, they still talking about AI machine learning. Okay, you're talking about how TensorFlow can help everyone. My name is Blue. I am a high school student, 17 years old. My freshman year, I remember Googling and machine learning. I had no clue what it meant. That's the really cool thing about the internet is that someone's already doing it, so you can just YouTube it. It's right there. And the minute I really saw what machine learning can do, it kind of like hit something within me. It's like need to build things to help people. My parents are immigrants from Afghanistan. It's not easy coming in. The only reason we made it through some of the time that we did was because people showed acts of kindness. Seeing that at an early age was enough for me to understand that helping people always comes back to me. And then it kind of hit me the way where I could actually genuinely help people. So this high school is smart, okay? This guy from Chicago, he learned about machine learning. He know what it was, so he looked it up on YouTube and he found out that machine learning helps people. So he's interested in helping people and he wants to do it by machine learning. Now he's popular. 
Use YouTube, people. I'm telling y'all, use YouTube, man. Just use it, man. Use upload videos, whatever. Now nah, look at him. Nah, nah, him and his family in Google Isle right now. Nah, he famous. Nah, he famous. Nah, everybody knows his face now. Okay, now you're talking about Google for Jobs. Google for Jobs. It's a complex, multifaceted problem, but we have been investing a lot over the past year and we have made significant progress. Last November, we announced the Cloud Jobs API. Think of it as a first fully end to end pre trained vertical machine learning model through Google Cloud, which we give to employers FedEx, Johnson & Johnson, Elsa, Carrier Builder and we are expanding to many more employers. So in Johnson & Johnson's career side, they found that applicants were 18% more likely to apply to a job, suggesting the matching is working more efficiently. Mm. And so far, or, or four and a half million people have interacted with this API. Mm. But as we started working on this, we realized the first step for many people when they start looking for a job is searching on Google. So it's like other search challenges we have worked with in the past. So we built a new feature in search with the goal that no matter who you are or what kind of job you're looking for, you can find the job postings that are right for you. And as part of the So now he's saying, okay, now the CEO of Google saying now from the Google search bar, you can find a job instantly based on a, the API and the AI with the Google jobs and cloud, all that, all that fancy talk. You'll be able to find what you're looking for right from the Google search. That's what you say. Monster, Facebook, Caddy Builder, Glassdoor, and many more. So let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so now you're going to demo how this works for job search on Google search. Start searching for retail jobs. Retail jobs. And you're from Pittsburgh. That is dope. Now, okay, now you're saying retail jobs in your, your area. And we immediately start showing the most relevant jobs for you. So it's showing up 7 uh, Eleven. Retail is showing up, T-Mobile is showing up, uh, Family Dollar is <laughs> showing up, hey. Okay, it's showing up, PetSmart. Okay, yeah, you, and down at the bottom is showing you can search through, by, by category, title, they was posted. And you can scroll up and down, and like you have a bottom bar still at the bottom, showing you all the different uh, tabs you can click on to, to help you to help you lower 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 down um, to help you find the right match. Basically, it, it'll show you if it's full time, part time. So and it'll even show you the maps once you click on it. Once you view the job, it'll show you exactly the directions how to get there, and it'll explain its general uh, purpose of the job, and then you can apply right from Google Chrome. And then also, what I saw on the um, diagram, it, it had like a little notification bar. So, based on, and you're still looking for that job or whatever, you can turn that on for notification for the job searches, and then every time. Uh, a job opens for that position, it alerts you through the uh, notifications. So, thank Google, man, because Apple ain't doing this ish. I'm telling y'all, man. You will find better jobs now with Google. <laughs> you thank Google, man. What's up? And it, this is all works through AI, AI and machine learning. 
Mobile first to AI first. That's what he said in the beginning. Yeah. And we are driving it forward across all our products and platforms so that all of you can build powerful experiences for new users everywhere. It'll take all of us working together to bring the benefits of technology to everyone. I believe we are on the verge of solving some of the most important problems we face. <laughs> that's our hope. Let's do it together. Thanks for your time today and enjoy Google I.O. Okay, now that's the end of it. End of the presentation, guys. We made it, man. We made it. We made it. I'm getting hella notifications, man. We made it, man. All right. Woo! Man. All right, so I just shared the um the Google live stream. Damn. <laughs> I just started the Google live stream on Twitter, so if you on my Twitter, you can follow or whatever like that. But uh, yeah, so we learned a lot today, guys. We learned about Google Photos, getting some new updates, uh, Google Assistant, bringing Google Lenses to Google Assistant. So you'll be able to use your phone to, to find find things, um, identify things through pictures and images and stuff like that. Even in through your Google Photos, you identify buildings and landmarks. So, Google Photos and Google Assistants. Also, you know, Google Assistants, um, Google Assistants will also come to Google Chrome, Google Chromecast, as well as, what else? Google Chromecast will come, yeah, Google Chromecast and Android TV. So now we got Google Assistant coming to, to the TVs where you can tell it to open up calendars and weather right from the Google uh, Chrome or Android, uh, I mean, Android TV. All right. So, and then what else we got? We got uh, we got more VR, AR coming. Um, Android O beta is out officially. And um, let's see what else we got. Uh, hmm. Um, okay, Android Go that's coming out next year. That's gonna be for the look, the every um, my bad, the entry level people, people that just starting off with smartphones or want to be some cheap or something like that. But uh, yeah, um, um, Google, Google for jobs, so that's coming in Google search. You could probably do it, it's probably in there now. Um, let's see, oh, the Play Store will get more security. Better security now. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, it was a lot. It was very interesting. Like I said, it's Google now is to a point where it's about AI, AI machine learning, cloud, um, the assistance. It's mainly about machine learning and AI, man. Google, Google will dominate VR and AR. I don't see Apple dominating in, in AR, VR, or AI. So, or the cloud, because yeah, no nobody care about cloud on iOS. But yeah, Google. Oh, <laughs> don't forget about Google Assistant coming to iOS. Google taking over, man. No matter. Google took over, and that's all. That's it. Now, watching that video making me hungry. The boy about to get something to eat. Um. I'll do another recap video about Google Owl, what I like, what I didn't like about it. That once again, well, I don't know. Like I said, man, no no mention about Project 5. Um, and no mention about Android 1. Unless that unless that's another coming up uh, update. So hey Google, if you don't mention nothing tomorrow about Project 5. Hey, I'm in my last month anyway. I'm in my last month for the credits anyway, so everybody can get their credits. So this is my last month with Project 5. I even talk about it in another video. But yeah, just because of what I watched, Deuces Project 5. Had a good run. I'm going to move on to Text Now. <laughs> Officially full driver, Text Now Wireless. Sorry. But uh, we're going we gonna to talk about that, man. We're going to talk about all that. But uh, 
Yeah, so that's a wrap for Google I.O. 2017. Well, the main keynote, everything else going to be developer previews. You're going to be into the developer. I might I might check it out. I don't know if I'm a live stream for the developer conference, but um, this is the main keynote presentation. This is the one I wanted to talk about, the one I want you all to watch and follow me with. So your boy Two Phones is um, saying late, saying do till later. All right, I'm out. One. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, buddy. Like me, follow me, share the video. Deuces.